All right. And we are live. The last word. Lord Cognito, Ebontis. No time got traps this day. You know, we got to see how our little way is. He's under that secret doing. NDA travel, probably, but secret you never know. ND- yeah, NBA Chavlis. So we throwing it back Flashpoint style with the cheetah. How are we doing, sir? First of all, before we get into that, you know, we do know how you're doing. And <laughs> I just want to say, you know, again, rest in peace to our good friend, to the campfire, Raya. Um, obviously, I, I got. I just want to speak briefly. You know, I was very fortunate to get a chance to to meet Raya and, and, and the pups and everyone else. And I, I distinctly remember the sass. The little attitude. She took a little while to warm up to me. Yeah. She didn't want me to pet her at first. And you just told me, okay, God, give it a little time. Then she circled back, and then it was all good. And um, obviously, I know you've been going through it as far as with, with her health and checking on the status of her. And then obviously, the news broke. And us as, you know, as a community, we really wanted to send our love to you because I know how much you care for her, how much you care for those, those dogs. And um, I, I just want to say, man, like I... I, I know the feeling, and you're getting the love from me. So, how are you holding up? It's been a, a, a rough couple of days. For yeah, you. it's been yeah. Um, really rough. <laughs> yeah. So for for me, I can say I've had a sheltered experience so far in the world of grief. I did lose an aunt in October, November. She's probably one of the closest to me. Um, yeah. She's kind of moved with my parents. She was my mom's sister, and she went through. Tons of like multiple cancer treatments over the years, surgeries, like she she had a rough fight, Um, but she finally uh, passed towards the end of last year and she just was to the point where, you know, kind of went. But yeah, Raya, she, she was my first dog I've ever had. First. First dog ever. And yeah, like yesterday on stream for any of you guys that were there on Twitch while I was streaming Nightingale, Mm -hmm. started for about the first hour. Um, Somebody asked, hey, what happened? I went through the whole story, but I was broken during telling that story. Um, so there's been waves of emotions and tears and crying. I already told you guys I cry at movies. So something like this, I'm going to just absolutely be busted. And I knew it. I had told people, I was like, first time this happens, I'm going to be pretty useless. And I was. Um, but it does help a little to talk through it. We're trying to just celebrate the good times more than the bad. Um and we, you know, are trying to look at some of the silver lines. You always hope you could do more, but in her situation, she had an autoimmune disease, so she already had that that was working against her and everything that kind of transpired. She was home. She was with her family. And she didn't suffer long. It was probably about two days mm-hmm. <laughs> where it was kind of the labored breathing that was a struggle. And she was home. <laughs> Everybody was in the same room together. And... Yeah, no, no, I hear you, brother, and and I just felt for you because you know seeing it, you know, obviously, and, and yeah, we in were. I was, time. I yeah. was, I was kind of there. Like I watched kind of the struggle she was going through, and it was, you know, low red blood cell count, anemia, mm-hmm. lack of oxygen. Like I, I, it's that's not a way I want anybody to go. That's why I'm glad it was yeah. short, but yeah. also like she was hurt at the end, as you said, she was sassy, she was spunky. Uh, she always had a bit of an attitude. She she would what about she the was panic? hilarious. She, she would move the head oh yeah, no, like panic? even on like her last night, we were all hanging out in kind of living room, just hanging out watching TV, just chilling because we weren't entirely sure what the because I took a video over and took her up to the vet because they were just about to close. But I was like, hey, can you look at this like and see? Because right. I called to try and talk to one of the two vets that yeah. had seen Trying her, and I was like, hey, can you see? What does this look like? I know this is how it sounds. I can only Google so much, but I showed it to her and she's like, now obviously I can only diagnose her, but from what I see, you know, that does look like labored breathing. Right. And labored breathing versus panting, very different thing. If you want to look it up, you can, but it's just a struggle for just breath. And that was the low red blood cell count for the science people. Red blood cell hemoglobin takes oxygen to your body. Kind of an important thing. We all don't last long without it. So that was a struggle, but I mean... Like Friday, we took her to the vet, had blood work um, because she had like a little loss of appetite, got her on some meds, got a little uptick in the numbers on Friday, Mm -hmm. but then like Sunday and Monday, it just, it happened fast. So it was rough. It was quick, but we were home together and it's kind of the silver lining. We like, they offered to maybe do like, you know, put her in a hospital for like four days or something. And I'm like, I would have felt a different type of terrible and sad if she had passed alone by yourself in a hospital without anybody around so Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. 
both of us that. and the dogs all together. And while it's rough to kind of have to deal with some of that yourself, mm. we had 11 and a half, <laughs> 11 and a half, Seven literally years. like six months, six weeks old, uh, to 11 and a half years. So, yeah, and, it was, thing is it's, it was, please. no, I was just going to say, it was like, for a first dog, <laughs> I always wanted a husky and I got a really good one to start. <laughs> but the yeah. attitude, that's what I was trying to say, like, so it's like, yeah, I'm going to be a little weepy, but like her attitude to the last day, like you'd like give her a pet or like reach up to pet her head and she'd like duck away from you because she was always like, I'm good. You always kind of have to ease yeah, up yeah, into yeah. the pets and like ease come from the, the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I've got enough snuggles. I'm good. Her. Like, yeah. yeah. That's a um, fact. So she was still that literally on her final night. So she was her from start to finish. Like she would do the thing where she wouldn't like go over to the door and like woof at you. She would just walk over the to the door like to go outside and just stare at you there yes. just just She's like look at you yeah, yeah i remember that so her eyes were just her eyes were yeah, filled with attitude the whole time so it was when i came through yeah, yeah when i came through i visited you and i spent the night i'm trying to remember yeah you did yeah, yeah you, stayed in, you stayed in our guest room yeah because yeah, i came through for swat's wedding i was like oh yeah, I'm and then you drove. Yep. yeah and i drove to you and i never forget the stare like yeah. Who are you, human? What are you? What state your business? Yeah. <laughs> and then it was a little light ground. I was like, oh, this not gonna go good. Because at first, I think Enzo and everyone was fine. Enzo was fine. Yeah, Enzo was good. But, like, I don't midnight wasn't here when you came through. So. Midnight wasn't there at the time, yeah. right? So midnight didn't just, but yeah, I remember. I was like, oh, all right, well, was okay. I see you go. Look, I'm here in peace. Yeah. But then eventually she came over. On her own, and I'll never figure. I was so happy because I was. Yeah. I, I, that's usually I usually don't have an issue with yeah. animals, but yeah, it was cool. Yeah. So yeah, it's been it's rough. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's uh, closest it's ever hit me, and mm -hmm. I mean for us, me and my wife, all we've got dogs. So yeah, that's they are kids, they are our fur babies. That's like kind of a yeah. joke, especially with huskies because they're covered in fur. So. But we've got Enzo and Midnight, and I mean, they were there. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's one mm -hmm. thing, too, like people are telling me, it's like, try and have them around. But part of my issue was also, it's like, if you have to make that tough decision, which yeah. I was also not really wanting to do, and in mm -hmm. total stubborn Raya fashion, she's like, you guys aren't going to make this call for me. I got this. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, she's she fought as hard as she could. Yeah, she that final night, I even told her, and it was like, hey, you got to go? Do You got to go. Yeah, but. Respect. Yeah, she's no more pain. <laughs> yeah, she's in a better place. Thing. Yeah, respect, man. Again, we all we love you, E. And like I said, we we always thinking about you this week. And that's why we even told you. I was like, look, bro, take yeah. as much time as you need. But then we came to the decision. Okay, maybe we do the show and just kind of get out, get it out, and then from a distraction standpoint, talk about what's going on in the game and and stuff like that. But I definitely wanted to send my love. And again, rest in peace, Raya. Definitely missed personality to the end and, and what a ride and i think what you realize too is you celebrate all the fun times when yeah. you, you know you had her as a pup all the funny moments her stealing food and pizza oh my boxes. god i was telling you before the show so if you picture like i pizza i would always get for long it's like just one of the random frozen pizzas i would like it was the freshetta mm -hmm. brick oven so it's like a square uh mm -hmm. and it was just like their brick oven pepperoni because it was like for frozen pizza if you get like the really thick crust you're eating a loaf of bread but if you, you yeah. don't want a cracker either, and it was like this kind of nice medium, I set one mm. of those on the counter and like, you know, we push it back on the kitchen counter or whatever. And then like my wife and I went to go. Yeah, I went, oh, believe me, if we want to, I think both Midnight and her have been paws up. Uh, <laughs> we came back. Half of that cheese was gone. She had wow. stripped like just stripped half of the cheese off of that pizza. You can see like little chew marks on the edge of the crust. Damn <laughs> thing was clean. So now granted. <laughs> She learned she didn't poop for like two days. So, you know, a little yeah, constipation paid. from the cheese. She yes. learned. Uh, yes, yes. I think the one time I was actually a little annoyed because it's, I, she stole salmon off the counter. I was like, yo. Yo, that's wow. I was like, no, -uh, you ain't stealing our, our fish. So. <laughs> ah, the salmon stealer. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, like, man. unfortunately, all of our dogs are not very good at hiding things. You'll just yeah. always find them. They're in their kennel. They're like, they already know. Like. We don't punish them in there. They just shoot like her <laughs> or in. They just, they're like, all right, Go I'm in here. Box. Go to the penalty box. Yeah. A whole oh, pizza man. constipated for like three days. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, it takes a little while for a pizza to go through. Yeah. We don't, we don't do human feed. We don't do, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. chicken. It's hilarious. I will tell you like dogs, like our, mm -hmm. at least our Huskies, vegetables are all carrots, man. I will start like peeling or cutting a carrot and they're like, shink. I'm like cutting up an apple and they are glued to me. The funniest stuff over like the healthiest food. You're like, that now there's some hilarious. food you're not supposed to feed dogs like avocados and certain things right. and grapes like certain things are bad but just like basic vegetables like 
what's this? And they're just chomping down. Yeah. That's hilarious. Uh, I love it. But yeah, I will say like, cause like Electric mm -hmm. Fish is in chat and uh, saying, mm -hmm. you know, they're Do Doberman's turning like nine this year. Oldest cat's mm -hmm. 16. It's just something that it's facing and that's, it's hard. And I know you and I talked a little bit before the yeah. show. Uh, we've still got two more. Enzo's 10. He's yeah. a champ, man. He's got the cleanest 10 year old teeth of a dog I've ever seen. But for mm -hmm. the longest time, Enzo flossed his teeth. I shit you not. Uh, he had this like oh, wow. little jester ball toy with these just like like a jester hat mm -hmm. with like the four yeah, like, kind of thing. He would take those. He would not destroy the toy. He would just like pull it between his teeth. It was you the funniest flossy? thing. Yeah, the dude was flossing. Wow. So That's he's wow. had some like, um, yeah, avocado is really bad for a dog, actually. So don't do that. Um, mm -hmm. So like he's and, you know, he's still pretty healthy. And then, you know, Midnight's obviously two ish. We don't know his exact age, but two something. Yeah. Um, but like in, when we got midnight mm -hmm. in the lost weight, really? Cause he kept him playing the whole time. He wore his ass oh, out. Him active. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he, yeah and so you, like, there you. was a point where we, we took in. So they're like, Hey, he could use to lose about, you know, five pounds or so. So we trimmed his like food a little bit. And then mm -hmm. we went back to the vet and they're like, Oh, you listen. Cause apparently people don't listen about trying to get their dogs to yeah, a little bit yeah, more healthy yeah. weight. So we're like, Hey, we tried, but apparently we had kind of maintained that. And then we got midnight and they're just like playing yep. like crazy. Uh, yeah, like crazy, and mm -hmm. yeah, and that there at that point he's he's lower than normal. You you probably just feed him normal now. So um, eh, nice, yeah, nice. so it's like they're I, the grief still may hit them for my sister. She lost. She's been through a couple. Um, mm -hmm. and she told me it's just. I mean, she knows she's been there. It's brutal for her too. And mm -hmm. but she said the dogs may take up a couple weeks to realize it. I'm glad yes. they were home though because it's the. Th I mean, you think you don't want them sitting by the door waiting. You don't yeah, want yeah, them true, waiting true. for them to, for the dog to come home. So it's mm -hmm. a lot of tough stuff. I mean, there's a couple good quotes, but one of the shortest ones, mm -hmm. surprisingly, that I just kind of came across and saw and remembered recently was from the God of War Ragnarok. And it was to grieve deeply is to have loved fully. Yes. Absolutely. And I was like, it hurts this much because I think she knows we loved her that much. Yeah. It, so. It's a celebration of life. Yep. And that, that's what it is because you know how much... You truly care, yeah. And to me, pets, they, they, those are your, those are your best friends because it's undying loyalty. Oh, it's it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I mean they they no ask for what they're like. Hey, yeah. if you feed me, unconditional love the whole way. Unconditional, like, no matter what you're going yeah. through, we're not going to have an attitude with you, regardless. We are there for yeah. you, and that's right, the always thing had a little that you attitude, you. but you know. Oh, well, Raya's different. Under, attitude. under the attitude, it was under, under the, the attitude. attitude. It was still there. We know. She, <laughs> exactly. she always did this thing. Actually, I haven't thought about this yet. So my mm -hmm. wife and I would like, you know, wherever we'd just give each other a hug and kiss kind of thing in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. She'd always walk between us and be in the hug. Really? Yep. She, that was that was her like subtle way to like be in the hug, but not yeah. be like hugged. Hug. Yeah. Okay. So like my wife and I, and there's always just enough room. She'd walk away between us. And that was her way mm -hmm. to be part of the hug. But, That's you know, it was her choice. Right. As with everything choice. in her life, all the way to the end, it was her choice. Oh, it's her way. Oh, she's going to do it her yeah. way. So, sure. oh yeah, let the boys outside, close the door, sit down. Then she walks over to the door. She's like, well, it's my time now. Just <laughs> truly. <laughs> the sad. So, yeah. Um, sad times, but, and it hurts. It sucks. There's no way to get over it. But I will tell you the, the good times are, they're, they're great. <laughs> yeah. Like 11 I mean, and a half years. I wouldn't trade it. This will suck. Yeah. We will move forward. Yeah, um, don't trade it for the world. But yeah. Without so. what's going on in the world, man, besides all this craziness you yeah. got through. Yeah, besides that mess. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sorry, everybody who started out and somebody's like listening to this podcast in their car. Like I was telling, I went through the story yesterday and I was just bawling as I told it. Somebody in chat, I think it was a bullet away or something, was like, I'm not over here crying in tears or mm -mm, no, not me. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. it's real. That's yeah, real. there we go. What is grief if not love persevering? See, persevering. Exactly. like there are a couple of those short, WandaVision, I do remember that one too. Like there are a mm -hmm. couple of those little short ones that, <laughs> sounds like bullet <laughs> i don't no, even know, i don't even know the reference that well but mm -hmm. that's funny um no i've been playing a whole bunch of different stuff oh so, right. what you been playing i've been playing nightingale right. to put out i put out an hour long tips video because there's so much about that game it's so do you know much about nightingale or not too much okay so if you don't know there are no onion ninjas anywhere <laughs> <laughs> yeah the onions like everywhere so many onions being chopped in my office right now um yeah. So Nightingale is a crafting survival game and they call it gas lamp fantasy. Okay. So instead of steampunk where it's more mechanically, you know, gears and everything, 
Ooh. the gas lamp is like that kind of timing and like genre of time. But if you Ooh. twist it to have more fey and magic and stuff involved, okay. so it's kind of a twist. And then the idea is you're going to, it's a crafting survival game. And you got different realms. You go through your tutorial and your first main realm is where your base will be. And you can literally fast travel to there from literally anywhere on the map at any point. There's no cooldown. And also if you're in another realm, because what you have are cards to create a realm. So you'll have, say, like a forest card, but then one's called like Antiquarian or Astrolab. And so you'll take a forest for like a biome, and then yeah. it's going to put this major card with it. And then that's mm -hmm. going to create a realm. And it's procedurally generated. Okay. It's okay. hosted on dedicated servers. Mm -hmm. So it's six player co-op as well, or up to six oh. total. So like if you all have the same base realm and I go and I make like a portal, you can all go with me. You can visit it later. It's asynchronous as well. I don't have to be on gotcha. for you to play. Oh, um, nice. Yeah. So like if we have this base realm, you can work on stuff while I'm gone. I can work on stuff while you're gone. Mm -hmm. um, so the co-op piece is really cool. It's $30. It's early access. There is definitely some early access to it. Um, so it's a little rough around the edges. A lot of first person. So first person combat. It feels decent. First person combat's not easy. Um, yeah. And again, it's probably not like the best I've probably seen, but first person mm -hmm. melee combat is not something I just frequent anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but then you got like first person, like a little marble crossbow, almost like a slingshot crossbow. Uh, then you get to a pistol. But there's a moment where you can do like a quick fan of the pistol where you just hold like it's kind of bonus fire and it has like four rounds. And it's just like and it actually feels really cool. It's like the sounds well done. And then you'll get into like axes later on and you've got multiple levels of tiers of stuff that you'll go through. Um, it's got a lot of potential. And I think right now for 30 bucks, you can get a cool experience in it and a good grind. Um, and for your survival game, the crafting is very in-depth which some people mm. may like, some people may find it too tedious. I'm it somewhere kind of in the medius. I'm somewhere yeah, yeah, yeah. in the media, the middle, because if you need to refine something to say like the third tier, you need to start with the base thing, then refine it to this and then refine it to this. So it's got, there's layers and steps to it, yeah. but also there's little things like if I'm going to craft, hey, you took down a boar or whatever, or you took down a wolf. Well, if one is like prey versus a predator, for example, when you go to make like, cook meat for a meal or something. Yeah. Well, the predator one's going to give you a little bit more health bonus that lasts for a cooldown for a little while. And that comes into later on, depending on which pieces of like resources and stuff you put together when you craft your gear and other things, you're actually going to be able to lean more into a build of say, maybe you want more range or you want more speed. And then you've got buffs. Like there is a lot of, a ton of absolute depth, depth and it's it. like customization to your character. And by the time you get done, and then when it comes to the realms, you're able to make all these realms and you can go venture in there, do all that. You come back, you can make another one and it's all procedural. So you go in there and they have these little spots to it. But I think it's like a foundation. Uh, okay. Some of them are ex-Bioware devs. So, I mean, I know, oh, you know, nice. who, so yeah, yeah, yeah there's yeah, yeah. people. Um, it's an interesting world. And like the main character, you're like main kind of fey guy to interact with. He's mm -hmm. probably not supposed to help you, but he's doing it anyway. He is such a smug character, but the voice actor absolutely crushes it. Like the nice. one for Puck, like does a really, really good job. Nice. Uh, medius, great new word. Yeah, I don't even know what to do with that word, but yeah, medius, great new word. Um, ah. So I put about 20 hours into that on the early servers. I played some with the devs. I actually got to play with them a little bit. That's dope. Uh, nice. Both like, like if you get through the early access, they took and showed like late game stuff where there was like, hey, here's like blue level gear, which blue would actually take a while too because I barely got the green. Mm -hmm. um, Same Destiny style structure as far as the. Yeah, um, and then purple gets up there, green. I think, is some of the higher stuff. Yeah, blue, green, or green, blue, purple. I don't know if there's anything above that. I wonder um, who, who pioneered that. Would we say Destiny or did, was Borderlands doing that before? Borderlands is probably doing, I mean, hell, Diablo 1 probably did some of that stuff. Yeah. Like, I'm just I mean, it's, it's funny World of Warcraft for sure. Yeah, those, have remained the those same. choices. Yeah, yeah. green is basically like white, green, blue, yeah. purple, some yeah. yellow, orange. Orange tinge. Yeah, and then if you go game. past that, then you get to weird, stup weird stuff like black or red or whatever. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I usually don't see much past that. Yeah, that's a fact. Um, yeah, shout out to three. He said, Wow, uh, always had it. Okay, cool. Yeah, wow, wow, yeah, dude. Yeah, that's chat. probably where I saw it the most, but yeah, I mean, no doubt. old school Diablo. So mm -hmm. that's one. I think there's a yeah. lot of potential there as it's $30 early access. 
you can have a good time in there. If survival crafting is your thing and you understand mm -hmm. some of the the depth to what it's going to offer, right. definitely has a lot of potential. Is it going to be for mm -hmm. everybody? No. Um, but as the early access, like there's fifth, there's major, there's biomes like the forest, mm -hmm. forest, desert, and there's environmental effects like rain. You'll get wet. So you have less stamina. You mm -hmm. have an umbrella that you can walk around in, but guess what? That umbrella, you jump off a ledge, a little bit of magic. Now you float like Mary Poppins. Oh, okay. Now you put Mary Poppins. <laughs> yeah. Um, desert. <laughs> if you're in the shade, you're good. If you're in the sun, you get hot, right. uh, in the swamp, there's like poison swamp, stuff like that. And, um, th there's like all those little systems. There's so much that already works. Uh, when you go to craft, you have the materials on you as opposed to pulling from your storage. That is one of the first things they're going to change. I promise you like that. Yeah, type of stuff. That. I hate when games. No, believe me. I was like, even some, when one of the presentations from one of the, uh, higher ups there, when I was doing one of those pieces, it was like, yeah, you can blame this one on me. We're working on it. Like, this is like, this is like kind of their passion. They will, cause they like, yeah. the, you know, the realistic survival. And it's like, mm -hmm. there's a point after a while. It's like quality of life. Come on. Quality so, of life, bro. Yeah. Um, nice. Has been pretty so. much just that. That and then the other one I've been playing is I mean I played some Hell Divers that is actually a blast. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, I haven't got into it yet. Hell Divers is hella fun. like hella fun is a stupid way to say it, but stupid co op. But even if you do random match made co op, you can still yeah. have a pretty good time. Solo nice. early on to get a feel for it, but after that you're yeah. gonna need teammates. But between the depth and countering enemies and just the way they lean into for democracy and liberty and all the just over the top yeah, over Starship the top. Troopers. Yeah, that's the vibe. I like the vibe. The of vibe it. is so there because there's a point where you're like, for democracy, and you just like shove a stem pack into you. And it's just all of that for liberty and all, just all of those stupid little moments, like nice. perfectly lean into the vibes. So Helldivers is good, but that was like oh. Travis and I kind of talked about that last week. Some. Mm -hmm. The other one I've been playing, uh, I was actually playing a lot today. I think I'm probably 14 hours in now to mm -hmm. the real build. Like I actually got to preview Pacific Drive back in January. Oh, okay, okay. And now um, I've been playing that on full release. Mm -hmm. um, it's also, it's a, this is the one with the station wagon, mm -hmm. the exclusion zone in the Pacific Northwest and like crafting and upgrading survival roguelike with station wagon. The most Ooh. weird, unique concept, but just the, Very unique. I remember this now I'm looking at it. It's now, the yeah. ambient. It's the. It's the Survive. environment, like when a yeah. windy storm is going on, the wind and the rain and the audio and just the way things, the vibe of it is always unsettling enough. And then mm -hmm. every time you go out on a run, you have to gather up enough of these like kind of energy modules to be mm -hmm. able to kind of make yourself a way to get back to your base. Well, as okay. soon as you open one of those hell breaks loose and you have a limited amount of time music starts ramping up you got to drive a little faster it gets a little chaotic and then you're like oh i'm gonna hit something yeah it adds adds yeah. the tension to everything uh nice. and then as you're like driving through then you barely get back with half the station wagon then you got to repair it and then you start upgrading parts and gathering materials and again that's kind of i, I, like think, the I don't know huh i like the art style yeah it's and like it's, it's not like high def graphics but it's very stylistic yeah. um yeah. And just as you, I'm in the middle zone of there's an outer zone, which is a little more mild. I'm in the mid zone where things are worse mm -hmm. and there's still an interior zone. Haven't even seen it yet, but even in the mid zone right now, there are things that mm -hmm. just want, well, I, I was sitting there and all of a sudden a poison storm passed over my car and was going about the same seat I was for. And I was trying to outdrive this poison storm and my <laughs> car is just <laughs> melting outside of me. I'm just <laughs> watching like the gauge of normally green and then it's going to yellow and red. And my parts are just deteriorating as I drive. Yeah. Um, so again, I can't say either of these games are going to be for everybody. Yeah. But they're both so different. But again, you've got survival and crafting in both very different ways. I mean, I'm leveling up a station wagon versus, you know, axes and melee weapons and, and, and your armor is not big, like steampunk or clunky armor. Your armor yeah. is like coats and nice hats and it's oh, okay. you're like for the fancy time. yeah for fancy. the time so yeah, it's like a different yeah. spin so nightingale mm -hmm. and both pacific drive they're both unique games and i think there are people who are going to be able to find fun in both of them the voice acting in uh pacific drive is well done because there's no people you see yeah all first person voice mm -hmm. acting i think is very well done uh for the three main characters that you interact with and mm -hmm. i think there's a fourth one who kind of does some lore things but 
Yeah, it's all this kind of, it's a lot of environmental storytelling and audio storytelling through the characters kind of doing a one-way talk over a radio to you. Yeah. Yep. Um, the, the kind of kinda build. Me, um, Firewatch vibes in that respect. I don't know if you ever played that Firewatch? game. Firewatch? Yeah, Firewatch. Yeah, played it better in my opinion. Firewatch, some yeah. people loved Firewatch. I was okay on it. Kind of mm -hmm. like the radio messages with the lady and stuff that you were hoping yeah, to meet. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. wasn't, yeah, I was like, sorry. Um, but yeah, I think the voice work on this is for the characters. They really fit the bill. I think they did a good job yeah. on those. Uh, so those are most of what I've been playing. I haven't touched Destiny too much in this week. And last week I did a video for it. Mm -hmm. How about you? Since I have been talking yeah. for like, I swear, 25 <laughs> minutes over <laughs> here between. Out, man. Yeah. yeah it's, it, so I've like, yeah, the embargo for both of those was on like on the 20th. I missed both because that day was just gone. Yeah, because you've been going um, through it. Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. I've been trying to just catch back up and the distractions help a little bit and yeah, hanging absolutely. out with stream and everything. You second mm -hmm. Yakut like and, a dragon. Like, yeah. where are you at right now? So it was all about infinite wealth. Because when I thought Tekken, I thought I was going to just do Tekken, do the story, and then infinite wealth was going to grab me. And then um, that, you know, that was the plan. But then Tekken was so good that I didn't want to stop playing. So I, it just kept me going, kept me going. And then now I'm doing the competitive thing. Shout out to Sinister them in the chat. You know, we usually do player matches and we're doing the PvP stuff and it's just a blast. It is, it is just so much fun. But now that I finally slowly got it out of my system, I'm like, okay, now I can focus on, not that tech's out of my system, but now that I, it's not dominating the way I, I just didn't want to stop. I didn't want to play anything else but tech and what was, what, what was happening. So now that I've kind of, okay, let me get to my responsibility. So yeah, I did like a dragon, started that. Put in about you know fifty to sixty hours on beat it. it yet? Um, yeah, beat okay. it yesterday. Beat it yes, because the reason why I wanted to beat it is because I knew get it out this week because I know Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, so I know and that's another. Yeah, one that I game got admit. some uh, terrible reviews. You're not gonna want to jump first, just straight into that thing. Exactly. We see we see what's going on in the Metacritic. Really highly rated. Average, like literally <laughs> ninety two and ninety three on open and Metacritic merged to a ninety three overall, like on yeah. both. It's, yeah, it's 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 really cool to see. So that's that's on the radar. But yeah, like a dragon, really fun game. I mean, you know, the the JRPG and the turn based combat is just masterclass in it. They've they really stepped the game. The movement around the characters, being able to attack, being able to position yourself, not just stationary turn based, where you can move around. It's cinematic action kind of based turn based, where you move around the characters. If you get behind them, you do back attacks. They do way more damage. Then what I like is if you build the relationships with your your party, they it actually makes them better fighters in the game. Oh, and like they a like companion you knock somebody down relationship mm -hmm. boost kind of thing. Yes, you okay. knock somebody down, they come over, they stomp them, they clean them up. You could do tag team moves together. You knock they, them they down, they stomp them out. Wow, that's oh yeah, it's 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 crazy, it's crazy. And the mini games in this are absolutely hilarious. They have a the Doko Island that's almost a straight up Animal Crossing in their game. They got this Is addictive there a Pokemon thing. The yeah, it's called Sujimon. That's addictive. That got me just as enticed with, as far as the main game, which is good. And then um yeah, so pretty much. The story is basically two separate games. You got, it's like they merged two games together and then you got two historic characters coming together. So it's a lot. It's a lot, but so, I thought they pulled it off. I yeah. feel like at one point you said it though. If I was ever mm -hmm. going to start into that series, I don't maybe. Like I a mean, Dragon 1. Yeah, I was going to say Yakuza Like a yeah. Dragon before they switched the name. Yeah. Now is the whole, I don't know if this is a spoiler or not because I've just probably mm -hmm. listened to enough people talk about it. Is Like a Dragon because the Ichiban Yes, Ichiban is the e new protagonist. Kiryu's... No, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> Kiryu and Ichiban said before like a dragon. I was going to say, I was like, because like, is Kiryu kind of like dragon or whatever, and then he's like him. Is that kind of where the name is going oh, for? Oh, no, 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 no. I know oh, where you're okay. going. No, I no, didn't no, know no, if no. that's okay, like nah, nah. the play they were going for. I wasn't sure. No, 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 no. They definitely didn't do that. They definitely, but I hear what you say. So basically, the series from Yakuza 0 all the way to 6 or whatever it was, um, that was Kiryu was the main protagonist. Like a dragon comes out, Ichiban is the main, main protagonist, and then they change it to JRPG style turn base because the other games were just pure beat em up. Yeah, they were action. Yeah, with them. action heavy. You know what I'm saying? With these cinematics and stuff. So, yeah, I would say you could start at Like a Dragon. That's when the shift is. You could do um, the man who erased his name in the middle to fill you up with Kiryu as mm. far as what's happened to him. And then that transitions right into Infinite Wealth where you have the Hawaii back, excuse me, the Hawaii backdrop and everything else. So, yeah, it's 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 dope, man. It, it, they really pulled it off. Some pacing issues here and there, 
But overall, and it, the game is absolutely hilarious. It doesn't take itself seriously with some parts, and some parts are really. Oh, I, feel, I, I think it was uh, like a dragon, whatever seven is. I guess since this is eight, mm -hmm. seven. Mm -hmm. There was some baby place. I don't even remember. Yeah, I saw yeah, some yeah. random picture, and I was like, I don't know what's happening in this game. This is the weirdest random thing that's going on. Literally, the game. You're like sometimes you're like, yo, what is this? Like the developers are having a ball. They're just They're like whatever we can put in here, we're gonna see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> But then it has this balance of just being really emotional and fun and telling a deep, rich story about the, the Yakuza in Japan and, 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 and the effect on the government. And then the old way of doing things versus the new way of doing things. Powerful stories. So, yeah, and, and tearjerks. And you're going to want to care about the, these characters. So, yeah, yeah great game. Got that done. Yeah, like, if a game can make you care about characters, it's doing something right. Even if it's got the goofy around it, the fact that it can mm -hmm. do both is actually quite impressive. Uh, yeah, I know, absolutely. like, I mean, both of those were nines 91 mm -hmm. i think 90 and 91 90 somewhere in there and then yeah. now you're just you're batting a thousand for the first couple of months because now your next yeah. follow-up from what i'm hearing Ooh. i listened to the ig and beyond a little bit and i tried not mm -hmm. to get spoiler or anything but i'm so far behind it wouldn't matter um mm -hmm. we got to i was listening to how long they played to review it mm -hmm. uh i forget her name one was like 120 hours, but they were close to finishing everything. Review mm. was like 80 hours. There's mm. some random, there's something they get like sucked into and they like, they wanted to complete it. So there's some multiple mini games in there. But mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, Metacritic dropped today and everything was like 93. Yeah. You've got a, yeah. you've got a bigger adventure, like 60 hours, I think will be yeah. on the low end for Rebirth. For re oh yeah. Because that I sounds like it's Maddie, just going to be huge. He's, he's got 40. He didn't make it. He didn't make a tremendous dent just yet so it's yeah. and then they, they went open world a little bit so you got that well here's the thing though think about this final shape was supposed to come out during it like bro i would have been finished <laughs> so in a way you, I'm okay i've already been changes. drowning last week was ultros i didn't even get a chance to review it right and then it was like nightingale something uh pal world happened out and pal world like yeah. that happened out of nowhere nobody expected that nowhere. one to happen yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I missed Enshrouded. I've heard that's actually really good for like crafting, survival, everything. Like the whole environment is like destructible and everything comes together really well. Helldivers, Ultros. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and the Ban Banisher's Ghost of New Eden. I did play that one. Uh, I reviewed that last week. Mm -hmm. um, nice. So like that's kind of the thing. It's like there, cause that was what Travis and I both reviewed that. So we talked about it last week. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, this February is just getting... Kind of crazy. crazy. So yeah, crazy. if they were sitting here now, granted, mm -hmm. we have two weeks from the release of Final Shape until Shadow of the Earth Tree takes away yeah. all of the internet for thought you guys. process. For you guys. <laughs> you saw oh, I mean, guys. Yeah, yeah like, I'll, you. I'll wait. Now the problem with that is if they stick uh -huh. to their schedule, two weeks after the launch of Final Shape is supposed to be episode one yeah episode one that's so that's right. like the 18th and Earth, shadow of the earth tree is like the 21st and i was like well that's a problem Ooh. so yeah, i'm gonna have to trouble. see how the content drops with the with that i don't know if they do i don't know where things are gonna fall in there like the raid will probably be in the expansion mm -hmm. i'm guessing dungeons in episode two and three to space out that bigger content yeah you gotta space well, it out because yeah, like, final shape will give us a raid with the witness so yeah and two weeks later you out. wouldn't like yeah. do a dungeon i don't think exactly that um but yeah, I was like, I'm just glad. I was, I'm glad they were like Shadow of the Earth Tree dropping in two weeks. I'd be like, oh, because <laughs> I mean, on the 22nd we have Dragon's Dogma and Rise of the Ronin on the same day. I want to play both. Yeah. I yeah, I got my eye on that. I'm trying to see if I can get to tr cover dragons. Don't know yet. Um, mm -hmm. but trying at least throwing mm -hmm. all the stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean, Rise of the Ronin. We're talking open world Neo. I'd play look, absolutely living crap out of Neo one and two. And Neo 2 was huge. Huge. Like, that was, like, 50 hours. So many just crazy bosses and everything. I remember streaming mm -hmm. that thing. I was like, how big is this game? Because you go through some yeah. of these things. I mean, Elden Ring was 110 hours. That's different. But even for, like, Neo, I'm going, these are big. And they, like, added depth to everything. And this is, like, open world. You got a glider. And you got, like, a bird flying around. And you got mm -hmm. your samurai, like, styles and stances. It so I know it talks sick. to you. Well, and then I remember yeah, I mentioned it to you that I saw that there was, like, difficulties on it. Because I know Souls, not your thing as much. But if you can enjoy an open world samurai action that's not just brutally punishing, then you're there. So then you might be there. So Exactly. 
<laughs> you've got Final <laughs> Fantasy, and then you get to pick between. And Dragon's Dogma looks. Have you seen? It looks sick. Yeah, that Dragons. Looks like I mean, you're climbing it. on people's back. Like the, you got so many different boss fight. What he did. Yeah, yeah you've got like it. so many vocations. It seems like you can play damn near any way you mm -hmm. want to. And then you've got the pawn system where you've got your people you train up. People can yeah. borrow them for a little while, and mm -hmm. they can take their knowledge and share it with other people. I mean, Dragon's Dogma I never played, and I think it's something rising. They're like cult classics anyway, from what the first one is. Like, the people who have played it love the first one. Mm -hmm. I mean, both of those coming out. I feel like there's something else in March I'm missing. And then, yeah. like, I feel like the schedule really opens up. Really starts to pick and up. And this was like yeah. a debate I had with Travis, too, maybe a little What's more up? offline, but it was... What's going on? So I know like metrics and he even said this to me because I was like, hey, I don't know. I always wonder why does everything have to shove itself into like six weeks mm. versus April, May? I mean, we have a couple things in June now, but like mm. what about those couple of months? And just as you get closer to summer, more people go outside, more people are going outdoors, less people sitting at home playing games. COVID's not so much a thing now, so you got that option as well. But I'm just like at some point there has to be a saturation of Dumping everything in February, you're going to get lost. Some people mm. will find you and follow you, but especially like some, even thaumaturgy that like kind of, right. I don't even know how to describe that yet. I've almost got to get my words together and how to. It's, well, it's like kind of a turn-based investigation, but it's got like skill trees and you're kind of working with like spirits and demons. It seems kind of really mm. cool, but they even yeah. bumped their release date to like March 4th because February was just stupid. Was too, but yeah. And that's that was the question I was having with him, and I was just kind of curious your thoughts on it from mm -hmm. stuff you've ever heard or whatever, because yeah. you were you're you're so big and famous now. You're out there oh, on Jeffy stop. Grub Grub's morning mess. Oh, what? Stop. I was stop. floored when I saw that this morning. I'm going, whoa, for stop. one, Cog got up early. He must have been rough. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then the other side, I'm going, whoa, Jeff Grubb. And you want to know the only reason some of that makes sense now is because when I was streaming, all of a sudden giant bomb raided me, and I'm like, what the is this the yes. real Giant Bomb? Because yes. I've watched, yes. I've listened to Giant that Bomb is. off and on for years. Like, they're yeah. really deep debates about Game of the Year. They're always, like, hours and hours. Their Game of the Year discussions are really good. I'm going, is this the same one? And somebody's like, yep, this is love. the same one. Yeah, and you're I going. I said you some love this week. Yeah, man, because it was, it was dope. Like, Grub has been a good friend for a while, and um, I went to see Giant Bomb. The Lords went to see Giant Bomb. Things at PAX West, one of their kind of live shows. Nice. And um, yeah, we've always been good, you know. And um, he would just hit me up random. He was just like, "Hey man, you want to you want to do a uh, giant ball? You want to do the, the games mess?" I'm like, "Hell yeah, man, yeah, of course." Know. You so, don't turn that down. Yeah, yeah so we just fit, finalized what day it would work the the, the, the following week, which would end up being this week, and it was perfect because. I know he wanted to talk about Nintendo, and then he had the Nintendo uh -uh. Direct. Yep. Then he had Xbox games, you know, coming over, so he wanted me for that. And he wanted to talk to me about the Bungie situation. Yeah. He's like, oh, Bukong, I know you're a big Destiny guy. So it was like a perfect storm for yeah. me to be on as, like, the guest for all these topics. So, yeah, we had fun, man. Shout out to Grub. That was a ball. But, yeah, as the show ended, he's like, hey, you know, um, Twitch streams and then, you know, I'm going to let you pick, Kyle. Who you want me to send it to? So we look, and I'm like, wait a minute. He, at first, you was my first thought, but I'm like, oh, he probably ain't going to be on at this time. But then you were on. I'm like, yo, send him my boy Bonds. He's like, all right, I'm going to spell it right now. I'm going to put it right there. I said, like, he needs the love, man. He's going through a rough time. And I want I want y'all to send some love, send a raid in there. And it was dope. Everybody pulled up. Giant ball pulled I up. Literally I literally had, cool. like, timing-wise, when that raid came through, mm -hmm. like, I got about an hour into my stream. Then I went through the story about her, and I was broken during it. Took a little like break, walked to the other room. When I came back and sat down, I was maybe sitting on my chair for maybe ten minutes max, and that came in. So the timing, like I was just kind of getting yes. my stuff back together. Yes, so, I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah, like I mentioned it to a couple, it. but I wasn't quite broken at that point. So I was like, okay, this kind of works. But I was, I was like, I, I, I know that name. Yeah. Why are you here? <laughs> that was just That's very it, surprising. Baby. So that was Don't. that was very cool. Um, anytime, brother. Anytime. No, but I get that. You're you know you're you're big Xbox man now. You got yeah. massive yeah. podcasts you're part of. You got industry insider knowledge. You got connections. Um, a little bit. <laughs> you got What's DMs you with you know execs in places Sometimes. that I've heard about. Yeah. Sometimes yes. Sometimes no, but this, this is my out. question to Travis. What's was your question? What's your question? I know there are some metrics that will say, hey, February is where you put your games. It'll get you some time. People will buy them. But at some point, there, I feel like there has to businessly, because like Thought of Maturgy was an example, to say, hey, like, why the hell would 
do you not feel that if you took Dragon's Dogma and Rise of the Ronin? Mm -hmm. I can't say there's an, and again, they may not overlap as well. That may be a thing too. But like when you take open world action right. adventure games yeah. and they're sitting on top of each other, bump it, like move it two or three weeks for a month and like kind of come to an agreement and just know that like maybe neither, neither either they're playing chicken, like, hey, they're going to spend their money here. If they get to later, maybe they don't have the money then. But also like a stuff like Ultros or, yeah. you know, Nightingale Early Access or Pacific Drive, like, these are you know kind of finding small windows but they don't get a much time to have like breathing room and a little bit of yeah. time about them and especially yeah. the way february has been for years now mm. like i know skill up dies every february because it just does so much <laughs> he's got help now he's actually building out a team which is cool because mm -hmm. austin did hell divers he did suicide squad don't. austin did something else and he got stuck with something he's been though with the less fun and somebody else is going and that's mm -hmm. kind of where my question to you is or have you ever heard anything or asked anybody to say mm -hmm. Hey, when you get to this point, somebody steals a release date, somebody jumps on right. top, it gets too crammed. Why don't you move? Is there any certain benefit? Yeah. I know there's also fiscal years and stuff. There's a lot That's of factors. I was, about to say. Yeah. I was like, you yeah, there's fiscal corporate. years. Yeah, We're from thinking that from side. the gaming and the consumer aspect. And I get it. Like, from a consumer standpoint, it's like, yo, this is stupid. All of you guys are dogpiling on the same day and you're killing yourself because you're making the consumer have to make these crazy tough decisions and not everybody's going to yeah. win out. But Nobody the, has that I much time. Right, but the, the reality is the is the corporate side, which is some of the things have to come out by a specific quarter. Yeah. You know, other times it's okay, we have put all these resources towards this and you've got to hit that target. I think the industry is getting better though, because I remember a time where everything was very fall heavy. Oh, I mean well, and Titanfall two is the prime example. That is exactly. the one because it came out between Battlefield and COD. I'm like, what are you doing? You, you literally sent it out to die. That's the that's I, the prime I example because Titanfall mistake. Two was literally sent out to pasture when it was released. Yeah. It was horrible, but that's yeah. one of those <laughs> examples where there are fiscal times. But it was like I know it may not hit this fiscal year, but there's also mm -hmm. got to be a business point to where if we lose money because we're buried between 15 other games and the consumers mm -hmm. are spread so thin, mm -hmm. is there a distinction to say yes, it will be a different fiscal, but as an overall right. profit and revenue and for the business. Eventually, it's going to work itself out because if you make some money here, right, but you lose out on a lot of like opportunity costs because that's what you lose mm -hmm. there. You may have a fiscal deadline to hit, but if you miss out on mm -hmm. the opportunity of being a little more solo and free and being, hey, the only thing coming out for like two weeks is this one game, right? Then there's a point so of, I get it, and that and, that's and the, I mean, that's a financial and fiscal and all those other mm -hmm. things debate. I just more was curious your thoughts on if you'd ever heard anything or if that kind of, if it's a lot of the fiscal stuff, it's, it's all over the place. It, I'm sure it's more the fiscal stuff. And you got to remember, we're thinking as gamers, these companies operate in silos. They, they're just, they're in, blind, I mean? they're like in blinders on. Blinders. Yeah. yeah. And we I, don't uh, know what they're doing. We, and we can't operate like they're doing. Now, some have that political power to say, okay, you know what? They may be a competitor in the space yeah. and, or they may have an idea. We want to get out to market before them because you know. Say, that, well, that again, was what was um. Mm -hmm. What is it like? Callisto Protocol tried to beat out Dead Space Remake. I think was kind of that you thing. You hear about those stories? Yeah, right? I was like, you heard you they're like, that. hey, we're gonna make sure we sneak out before Dead Space right. ended up being the more favored one from Callisto. Right. Um, right. And I, and, and I also, get that kind yeah. of thing too, but it's it just kind of is weird when you get so many things stacked together. Some of yeah. it's got to get lost in the shuffle. And I feel, especially mm -hmm. even like smaller games, like right now, mm -hmm. the way the gaming schedule looks, mm -hmm. something like an Ultros or certain things that are smaller indie gyms mm -hmm. that may do really well if they get a little space to breathe. And yeah. you see like, you know, Tales of Kinzara Zao. That's one like I played the demo. Looks legit. That guy poured his heart and soul into the game. Yeah. It's at the end of April. There is not a damn thing at the end of April. Nothing is out there that I can think of. Now, there may be something, so somebody's, like, screaming right. at the screen saying, hey, I know this one game is this real cool. But I was like, mm -hmm. you look at the calendar, and you after you get done with, like, March 22nd, way more open. There's, like, four big games over the course of the next four months. So then mm -hmm. you say, hey, do we wait two months, move it a little bit, move it to early March, like Thaumaturgy's doing, like, hey, March right. 7th or 10th. And again, the way fiscals usually work, I was like, even for February, March had more space than February. And usually fiscals right. are at least done by quarter. Right. If you're going to go for like fiscal year, it's not usually like February 27th, some random ass right. number. It's usually end of Q1, Q2, Q3, whenever they fall. Mm -hmm. So even March felt like it had more space than February. So that was a weird one for me where 
because March for me is 22nd. And there may be one thing before that with Thaumaturgy on the 4th, but again, just that spacing is... I don't know you said, like, so many other reasons, but I do... I, I would be curious, and I know it's, like, weird gambles and metrics that they've got a whole lot of analysis that I don't have. Right. But... There's a lot of data in this, man. No, I know, <laughs> I know. And lot. that's, like, yeah. me... I do kind of enjoy the data at some point. It is like an interesting thing. It's like, this is one of those that I would wonder because it's a head scratch to say there's like 12 games I want to play right now. Or you right. get to middle of March, be like, you know, I, I, I snuck the couple in in February. I couldn't be like, well, there's like one March 22nd, but like March 10th, I don't have a whole lot going on for a couple of weeks. Bam, here's right. a new one. And then it gets a chance for a little bit more. I feel like those are, I would be very curious to see, like talk mm -hmm. through some of that on the business side. Yeah, and this it's is just publisher talk. What you're talking? To. Yeah, it's like this is big publisher talk. Yeah, and it's and that's where I mean I would just be curious to have that kind of discussion and understanding about it. It's it's yeah, so weird. No, it, I agree, it, and everyone operates different, right? Yeah. So you you have that aspect. So and yeah, the Grand Theft Auto doesn't give a damn and says when we're coming yeah, they, out, everybody's moving out of exactly. the way. <laughs> they definitely operate their own style. Oh, yeah, based on they, their yeah because well, they, that's yeah. the thing, and the same with like Elden Ring, like Elden Ring Shadow Shadow of the Earth Tree. They can just put a date on the calendar and they're like, we're good. We don't care. Yeah. But that's no, like being blind to that type of thing. I feel yeah, like it, it, if some it, game's like, Hey, we're going to come out January or June 20th. I'm like, you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> like that would be one of those moments. I'm like, we, that's, that's we the... as the gamer are informed about everything. Somebody that's going in these in companies the has to be informed too. Or yeah, not. But you got, but, <laughs> but you keep forgetting development costs. We gave you this bread and this game got to come out by this time. Okay. And that's nice. Hold on, hold on. Let me finish. That's <laughs> nice that you think you want to move it around. But if you keep stalling this, the development cost going to go up and you are now over budget. This game got to come out. And that's the tough call sometimes. That, to your point, people say, I well, I feel like okay, some discussions probably need more discussions that I'm thinking mm -hmm. about. Some right. should be listened to. And I'm sure many of them are just shot down. And yeah, I feel yeah, like absolutely. some absolutely. discussions to say, hey, we feel, you know, development the cost developer. has been a thing. Yes. As the I developer, agree. we feel absolutely. in the industry right now, this is a very packed month. We feel yes. our game will make you more money, which is the only yes. thing you care about as a publisher generally. Mm -hmm. We want to make you more money and we feel like we can be more successful absolutely. here. And that is some of the stuff that... No, those conversations happen all they the time. They have, like, and that's... All some, the time. Many get shot down. That's why February you see exists. see who's but, losing, exactly. Yeah. You see and that's what sucks. This is a publisher, yeah. And that's the thing. It's like, Absolutely. I wanted to play more, and if you spread it out more, I feel like I would yeah. play more. And that's a, that's a weird They're one. Just, publishers are just now learning. And I think even Nintendo Switch started this. Remember, like, Switch is one of the first consoles that like, I remember launching in, like, March. Oh, yeah. Like... Yeah. Like they were like, wow, you could be successful. And they had like one you know, game in March. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it, it they're, they're now getting it where we're getting February. Remember, we come from the era E. Oh, it was all it was like October, September, November sucked. Yeah, September through September. December. You know, even November. Even I think Destiny, December is even that, new. like 10 years ago. Yeah. In the life of Destiny, that changed. Absolutely. Destiny used to be that way, and now over the course yeah. of it, in probably the past five years, yeah. February's been um yeah. February has been yeah. stacked for it's about four crazy. or five years. So, so what it is, they saw metrics on February. They're like, okay, this is the new yeah. joint. But to your point, we're informed. We know, hey, you could be committing game suicide by launching in this same month with all these other things. And we got to remember, these publishers, they just think about money and mm. stakeholders. They're not thinking about from gamer sensibilities. There's only so many places gamers can play at the right. same time. And you could be cannibalizing yourself. So yeah. I get it. And the developers, a lot of times, feel like how you yeah. feel. And they present this to, to the publisher yeah, to try to get that's... pushbacks. Because, I mean, I feel like you could probably do a poll of a lot of gamers. Like, at some point, a publisher still wants to sell their game, so they do have to have, yeah. hopefully, an idea of what a, some gamers want. Yes, many gamers do not know what they want. I will tell you that. From Destiny alone, we don't know what the hell we want, and we never do. Because we want things, and then they make the thing we actually want, and we didn't know it. That's fine. But when it comes to your time and your money, you are the ones actually spending that bill. And when you when you choose to do that, how much time you have. Those are, those are factors that should be a consideration. Sorry, I drowned on... Way too long on this bad. one, but it's just, uh, it's, I mean, that's, and that's the thing, as you say, it's like publishers making choices, fiscal decisions and those things, metrics saying release the thing here. And it's just yeah. a kind of back and forth that I feel as, you know, February is now the new October, November time frame. Cause before it was like, if you're not out before Black Friday, you're dead. That's what it was. Like you were out for that sale that time. Everybody's in the store buying that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, 
But then on the other side, now it's like February is doing the same thing. And you've got these summer months when things may be outside. Some people still sit their ass inside when it's 100 degrees. Yeah. So who knows? But yeah. True. I rambled on long enough. Yeah, we got this thing, this game to talk about, man. Yeah. A lot uh, of things happening in this game. So we got two massive twabs. Quids. Mm -hmm. Still going to call it a twab. I think I, I'm just stuck doing that forever. Thanks. Uh, last week, Travis and I talked about Helldivers and Banishers and... Oh, Skull and Bones. That's another one. That one yeah. finally landed. That was the other one that... Uh, Skillop reviewed Skull and Bones, Austin reviewed mm -hmm. Helldivers, and then Skillop reviewed Suicide Squad, and Austin reviewed yeah. one other one that he had fun with. So it was like he was 0 for 2, and I was just like laughing. It's funny. Um, it's funny. So Shut we up, didn't man. talk about the TWAB last week because one, mm -hmm. Travis was like, that's Cog's thing. Yeah, that's Let weird. me wait till he gets here. And then now that's he's weird. out of town this week, so it's you and I. Mm -hmm. So. First that's off, weird. have you bought the Mass Effect armor? We must all know. Oh, yeah, all day. All day. Okay, it's all there. Can, all that whole package. Did you buy like every class? Um, yes. I went and got the um for the because no, the Titans look best. I ain't gonna lie. The mm, Titans Titan Shepherd. I know Titan Shepherd. Shepherd, so. you had your little engineering kind of thing going on. Yeah. I mean, look, warlocks, we gotta be Liara. All right, whatever. But I had to, my main thing is I had to get the Normandy. You know what I'm saying? The, the nice thing I know I will say. Full surprise, that was actually free. That was nice. Free. Yeah, free. Free, 99. free 99. Yeah, free 99. We like that. We like had that. To, I had to check. I had to make sure you were, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Log in immediately for that. Did, did my uh, wishes for Riven, and I was off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, just like everything in Destiny, if you wait, you are rewarded. Because oh, I, I think it was last week, the wishes got easier. Oh. So on week two, when you had to run around and find the Ascendant chest, which are not hard yes. to do, by the way, it was seven. Right. Oh, no, mm -hmm. that took me so long to do. Mm -hmm. Now it's three. Oh, wow, they really made it shorter. Okay. And then it was kill, so now it's blind. Oh, kill a certain amount of enemies in Lost Sectors. Well, they made it to where mm -hmm. in the Dreaming City, they're faster. And I did two Lost yes. Sectors and I was done. Yeah, I watched your video. Yeah. I literally watched your video for that because I went right to that thing. Yeah. And then um, I forgot the loadout I had. Like a void weapon and, yep. and void um, weapon for the shields on the yeah, legend one. Yep. If you did it the first like day, it. then yeah, it was uh, yeah. Philly's I did, I, the first I, day. I had to do it the first. I was like, it's literally yep. that lost sector, in the, and I wanted the double progress. Yeah, but I was like, boom, let me knock that bad yeah, way. That out. one yes. or Bay of Drowned Wishes, those are the two I do it in. Crystal, well, I saw you use it. Oh, wait, hold on, we got it. I got I got to be Bessie in your video, sir. I saw you uh utilizing a certain heavy weapon that uh. A lot of people thought it might be ineffective. Oh, I already told related. you I ate my. Oh, long, long ago. Oh, God, okay, yeah. Well, I yeah. said that like early in. Well, my... I used that for my solo flawless dungeon run. Are you kidding well, me? It, you know what I love about it? it it's so fire good. and forget for a little while. Yeah, it's a, let them incinerate. Yeah. Let the flames keep Look, popping. Ignite every so oh. often. No, Dragon's oh, Breath. I was God. like, they're not going to do it right. And somehow, man, dude, it cooks. It literally, it. but. They did it, yeah. Oh yeah, Dragon's Breath is legit. That is, I was that was a very pleasant surprise because I had, I never didn't even use it in D one. wasn't worth it. It just didn't feel in comparison to others. But man, I will say like Solar Loadout. If I need her, I'm it's okay. it's in my mix, man. I was yeah. pleasantly surprised. Absolutely. Uh, okay. So, mm -hmm. I think I had a little mark for our timestamp here. I'm trying to keep them somewhat straight. Yeah. Uh, so for the fifteenth for the TWAB, we have Sandbox discussion for a lot of this piece at least so threaded specter we'll start there currently over performing in high level pvp activities i heard about this uh reduce the class ability regeneration penalty duration i will tell you if anybody's ever read a twab and been confused i read that sentence right there and that almost didn't make sense i almost have to re reduce class ability regeneration penalty duration yeah and you're like, Penalty what? Yeah. Anyway, it's, it's, it's a fun by 50% in PVA activities, wow. Threaded Spectre now applies the same class ability regeneration penalty used by Ensnaring Slam when the player creates a Threaded Spectre. Increase mm -hmm. Threaded Spectre detonation by 25% in PVE. Like, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Threadlings were something I did hear about. I heard Threadlings oh, were all over PVP. Bro, I ain't even gonna hold you. Let me let me confession. Okay, I gotta know. Like, are you a threadling? Like, are you Bro. are you terrorizing people out there in PvP? I wasn't using strand in PvP 
when when Shran came out. I never really utilized it in PvP. Still, I was doing trials regularly, and I would see the swarms come towards me. I've heard about this. I have not gang. played much, but I've seen it. I've oh, heard about five it. Five of them. And I'm like, yo, what is going on? So I said, you know what? It's one of those, if you can't beat them, join, join them. them. Yeah. And, and I realized, I'm like, yo, what you call it is so good in PvP. Like the threadling builds, so basically I would just I would as a warlock, you, you throw your rift down, you have your threadlings. You 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 charge the grenade, you got your threadling, and it's just that extra little extra DPS when you're shooting, and then they go hunting, go chase down, and then on top of that, they were not the easiest to shoot no. when they're coming at you. So yeah, threadling builds, I I have to admit, man, strand and PvP, it, it was a thing. It was definitely things. I I, I, I heard felt of, I definitely coming. heard about it in like Twitter. Mm -hmm. I heard enough that it was. Kind of a yikes. They got us, guys. They got us. <laughs> <laughs> Come outside. <laughs> so they increase the aim assist shape size by a smidge for threadlings, which is weird. Uh, reduce the base damage versus enemy players from 40 to 35. Damage for with threadling evolution reduced from 45 to 38.5. Mm -hmm. So you're getting yep. two and a half points in damage for... Um, Fragment. fragment, I think that would fragment. be. Yeah, the fragment boost. And that's the yeah. point where you're like two and a half, like they yeah. they're killing it a little little more. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's, we gotta see. It, it doesn't see that, but once we find out what's going on with the upcoming health changes that we'll talk about, yeah. this is that, all that'll, that'll all make a difference too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fix an issue where groups of threadlings were not reliably chaining chain detonating when one was destroyed. Fix an issue where mm -hmm. threadlings sometimes did not play their. <laughs> Non-damaging destruction performance when destroyed by an enemy, resulting in them appearing to blip out of existence. That's fun. That's funny. Uh, RK Needle also increased the aim assist on it for the hunter throwing thing. Don't have a whole lot of hunters here, but they increased aim assist angle, increased aim assist fall off distance, increased tracking angle velocity, and increased the length of projectiles tracking shape. Fixing the issue with the uncharged melees while RK Needle is equipped, resulting in the player appearing to freeze in melee pose. So, oh wow, seems like they. Fixed and buffed decent amount for Arcane Needle. Yeah. <clears throat> Restoration also got a fix because yes, I huge. learned this oh, while I was me. working on my solo flawless. Uh, oh, how's that new Warlord's Ruin? Say. Yeah, it's okay. So you have certain fragments on that help you extend and start mm -hmm. your restoration mm -hmm. buff. The problem mm -hmm. with one of them, which I learned in the middle of my runs, somebody in chat's like, hey, that's broken. I'm going, excuse me. Mm -hmm. It would reset the case. You could get that thing up to like 12, 15 seconds or whatever seconds. it was. It would reset it to like two or three. Yep. And I'm like, I, so you took Golf one of them off. Fire sprite. Yeah. yeah. So you took one of them off and then all you would do is like star with like a two second number. But if you got enough kills and like sunshot and there was great for that, you oh, would be able yeah. to at least build it back up and extend it. Yeah. That was, so that actually seems to have been fixed. Yes. So they fixed huge. restoration and radiant and all the shit that was broken. Sorry, I've cussed twice this episode. No, you good. Yeah, Forgive me. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, finally. I mean, I'm so glad I got my Warlord's Ruin. Oh, you want to know the other thing about Warlord's Ruin? You know, in the Ogre encounter, when you got to like spawn the guy on the right side, you got to wait for his totems to spawn long enough. So there's mm -hmm. two if you want to be efficient and then like mm -hmm. nuke him down. Then you stand in both. Well, on the right hand yeah. side where I always was, it's where I got comfortable. I had felt I had enough cover. The dude half the time would throw one of his little totems and they'd go, shoom, and they'd just go off into the ether. They would not exist. Yo, that's crazy. Wow. So I half the time, not to any fault, of, like I'm waiting, waiting, nearly dying, waiting, trying to get him to get that second one to spawn. Yeah, to get the second one out. So I ended up, I was just like, I powered through whatever crap that was. They mm -hmm. tried to fix it at one point. They broke it harder. And then I think they may have fixed it later, but I was just like, I got my Warlords Ruin done. This has been an absolute mess. Restoration was done. broken. He was broken. I got it done. Oh, yeah, that's that's So that's it crazy. was, uh, yeah, it's been, been some stuff. Mm. So both Ember of Empyrean and Ember of Mercy fragments. So the max duration mm. extends from 12 to 15 seconds with Empyrean. That's actually what it used to be. Mm -hmm. uh, rework the duration extension granted by each solar defeat. So now it's longer. Defeat, like, should be fixed is the whole point. So if you had some issues with that, we're good. Yeah, that that's definitely me because I, I had a fire sprite build. I'm big on my um. But you're like collectible guys. Well, more so like I, I have uh, what is it? Dawn. I got like a, a six dawn chorus build where I'm burning stuff up. I'm getting fire sprites. I'm generating that that kind of thing. And what would happen is if you use Imperium and Mercy, 
and then you pick up the fire sprite, it was reducing that timer. So instead of I already built it up to like you said twelve, you hit the fire sprite. Now it's like two, like three, four. You're like, no. Yeah. So I was like, oh, it's got to be fixed because that's messing up that whole. Yeah, cycle. If you're so a I'm fire glad, sprite build, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad they addressed because I'm a big fire sprite build when I'm in I'm, I'm rocking solar. Yep. Now for sunbreakers, uh, we're improving the consistency of consecration. If I remember correctly, consecration is the slam. Like the jump slam melee thing that you can do. I feel like that's one of those things that I want to kind of say when it comes to um, like Mean Girls, stop trying to make fetch happen. <laughs> For whatever, I'm not, like, I don't think I've seen it in any reasonable build in a lot of places. I could be wrong. People make builds work mm -hmm. all over the place, but the whole like do a melee, jump up in the air and slam for that. It always felt like more of a process than it was worth, especially next to the bonk hammer. Even the bonk hammer now with a cooldown timer, still better, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. So they're trying, again, to make fetch they're happen, trying. but they're increase trying. the travel distance of the initial ground follow, a projectile that travels along the ground surface like thermite grenade from 18 to 20 meters. Increase mm -hmm. the height of the slam ground follow detonation by about one meter. Increase the travel distance of the slam ground follow to 20 meters as well. Increase the travel speed of slam ground from 16 to 24 meters per second. So they're trying to make it stronger. I don't know if it's going to matter. You bonking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm bonking. Yeah. Like there's, there's no way you're going to make me try and do like a melee wave, jump up in the air, slam down only in a forward direct. No, that's, that I don't. Especially because that thing's going to be on a cooldown. I'm going to have my bonk hammer back in a second. And that thing makes sunspots and then I can sit there. It, uh -uh, it's. Not for solar is that thing ever going to come close to the bonk hammer okay. until you okay. kill the bonk hammer. Please don't do that. Just yeah. Yeah. Uh, gunpowder gamble reduced self damage. That's actually a good thing because gunpowder gamble for a hunter, which I'm going to have to learn hunter, by the way, mm -hmm. for one of my um, charity drives. When we hit my 5,000, oh. which was amazing, by the way, you guys are awesome because we think we ended up at like 5,700, 3 million, man. That was nuts. We had him on the podcast. It was nearly a million in the night past 3 million before it was all done. That was crazy. Um, the but the self damage for gunpowder gamble, which I've always even like, even Dado when he was playing, he was like, This is actually pretty fun. Like, yeah, you kind of build it up, you chunk this slow throng, then just push and shoot it. Oosh. Self damage is like damn near in half, so now you're not likely mm -hmm. to kill yourself as much, which I'm totally fine with. Oh, that's dope. Uh, I've talked a lot. Do you want to take some yeah. of this stuff? No, yeah, sure, sure. I mean, weapon you know, archetypes, I weapon archetypes, you talk about heavy burst hand cannons. You know, they corrected an issue there with the aim assist. I've still yet to get one, <laughs> but uh, really? you, yeah, oh, I, I have I'm not got one yet. I think I got a warden's law from mm -hmm. doing. Warden, hold on, I think I have right. No, that was that trials. Mm -hmm. It looks gold. Was it mm -hmm. trials? No, that had to be nightfall. No, no. I, I think, know, wasn't it? I'm trying to remember where, 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 where the drop was at. I don't want to... It had to be... No, it was a Nightfall for sure, because I didn't do Trials in ages. So it okay. had to be... It's just my model on Dim looks gold for some reason. I don't know if I should... Weird. Uh, I got one with, like, Frenzy and Enlightened Action. It's okay, stats-wise, but it's just the whole double shot. It's... Double shot. Not really... Not feeling like vibing with it. Something about, like... A, the thing about a hand cannon is each shot counts so much. Yeah. So when you do the double shot... I don't always feel like they're both quite on target. They don't, gotcha. it's not like, tchum, like, um, Graviton Lance, where I feel like they hit better. They hit box, yeah. I feel like it is like this, like their stats. Mm. So then when they yeah, fire no. that way, yeah, it's a nightfall weapon. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. gold is a depth nightfall. That's why. Okay. Yeah, I did a grand, I, that was probably one of those times where, hey, you can farm a grandmaster on mm -hmm. some of these things really easily. That was probably it. Mm -hmm. Um, no doubt. Oh, shout out to Forte. Yeah, yeah what's up, chat. Forte? Five dollar super chat from Gaming Forte. Wow, I haven't been here in a while. Loving the energy that emanates from the church of the last word. In all honesty, I miss you guys forever, Guardians. How you yes, doing, Forte? Always. Hopefully you're doing well. Forte, South the DPS podcast. They going after us. Salute to oh. them. But yeah. All right, yeah. you know. No doubt. No doubt. Good to have competition. A. No, I mean, they, they don't talk that Destiny because what you call it. Forte's only day. He's a he's a retired Destiny, but he coming back for final shape. Oh, okay, to gotta gotta fight. see the you end. I I got gotcha. you. Yeah. yeah. And what you call it? All uh, his uh, part of slow mo. He really plays division. Now, he's a division. We had slow mo on one time way back, right? Oh yeah, no, I remember. Right around division two on. Or something I think like I was that. on. Oh god, what is the one with uh, Mooch? Yes, um, Crossfire. Crossfire. I think. Yeah, he probably was on there at one time. A couple, both of them might have been on there at that point. Yeah, I can't remember the episode. Yeah. 
Yeah, so salute to them. They usually go around nine. But uh, yeah, so you got that. And then we got bows. And how you feeling about that? Reduce the auto aim for all assisted. Start by uh, 15%. Aim assist will be less effective at long range and reduce the maximum auto cone size by 5%. You're a bow guy. How are we feeling about this? I am less of a PvP bow guy. And that's what this sure. is for. This is oh, 100% yeah. for people hitting bows in PvP. Now, yeah. I will tell you. Yes, Having yes. tried to use a bow as a mm -hmm. average player, not high skilled, mm -hmm. trying to use the bow is not an easy thing to do. It is a high skill yeah. weapon. Now, the, mm -hmm. the ceiling may be up there. And this is mm -hmm. one of those points where it's like, I think the frustration of people getting pissed off by being killed by a bow. Now, Layman Arc is a different thing. Layman Arc's yeah, ability to poison that. and take you out. That is okay. a thing. Like, I'm not going to argue, but a normal mm -hmm. bow. A yeah, normal, normal bow sure, is yeah. a hard thing to be good at, but I always respected the people who were maining a bow in like trials. And I'm like, you're actually somebody to be feared because you've taken the time yeah. to be good with that. And yeah. that now granted, there's also things where if you get quick switch on a bow, quick switch, quick switch high mobility, like up. high agility on the other, it's bow. And then mm -hmm. by the time that thing lands, you're switching so fast. You can't so react. Fast. And they're that's, cleaning up on you. Right. Quick. So yeah. that's the other piece. So it's like, this is all PVP. I knew it was. Yeah. I'm not too concerned. If my yeah. wish ender still hits what it needs to and smashes like a truck in PVE, I'm fine. I'm not wish keeper, is. wish ender. Wish ender. Exactly. Wish keeper, Definitely unfortunately, wish is going to wander itself into the vault and collect some dust. Yeah, I got to finish right. the catalyst on that. I'm sorry. But yeah, I just, I, I'm just so not enthused by the weapon. <laughs> that I'm like, I got to get it done. I was yeah. like on the weekly reset to get it done and make videos. But yeah, I haven't. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't have a pur I don't have a purpose to pull it out because it is such Same. a like you could use it in Vanguard strikes, but yeah. high level stuff it's not gonna jump into yeah. the mix. It's just I'm not. just gonna get it done because I feel eventually we will get a buff or a rework. It needs I something. Feel. Like I mean, that's the yeah. set. I hate. I really bugs me though that when weapons come out like that, and I know mm -hmm. not all weapons. I almost hate saying that phrase. I was gonna say I know not all weapons need to be good in all things, mm -hmm. but like. It's not good in like high level PVE, and then it doesn't really seem like it's got much of a place in PvP. I don't know what you're going for it for. So that's I guess one of those where I'm yeah. like, I know some will have like little niches and mini games. Like I know Mercules really likes his idea of like mini games around a weapon. Like Revision Zero is kind of a good example. He built that and it's been buffed up yeah. a little bit too. Sick. But Wishkeeper is one of those. I'm going. I think you missed. Yeah, yeah they definitely they, they they know they missed off they, the mark. They yeah. The usage. yeah, they yeah. definitely missed. So we got that. We got auto rifles. All looks like all break neck. Um, they missed the 12 perk target lock. Interesting. Shout out to Breakneck. Yeah, so now you um, can work, go work on getting a better one, apparently. Work a better one. But you have to grind Gambit, so good luck to you. <laughs> Scout rifles got a little base damage, 5%. All right, they are like so that. afraid of those. But so no, afraid of Scout range. rifles. They're like, please don't yeah. sit in the back of the map or in the back of the PvP, PvE encounter and plink away with your infinite ammo Scout rifle that you have some of the worst perks on and they yep. feel weak as hell. Like, if you yep. are going to do that, it is going to take you an hour, and good luck. Like, they are Shades so... Of so terrified. They're, st they're still scared of um, D2 vanilla trials meta. When we used to be at the distances, everybody had their name like Midnight's yeah. and their scouts, and, 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 oh, Mida was running rampant. Yeah. It was like, Mida was, Mida was quick, yeah. Now, yeah. like, on the other, on PvE stuff, though, the, the way... Mm -hmm. I feel like it was more of a D1 problem, though, because it was the way things were designed. Like, if you go back and you play... What's the strike I'm thinking of with the big servitor in the end? That's... Oh, uh, we talk about devils. The good music. Oh, Rock yeah, music. Yeah, yeah. Devil's... Devil's Ruin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Devil's um, Ruin, yeah. That is a D1 style strike. So when you yes. go through and play it, it feels that way. You can, I can solo it because it's a D1 style strike. You can sit in the back. You can plink away. You can sit in there and plink. So yep. many of the encounters now, you can't do that. The way they make everything now, like, hey, what's the first thing in Warlord's Ruin? Run around like a chicken with your head cut off and try and get a little bit of cover. And a scout rifle doesn't make sense. Yeah. In most places, a scout rifle doesn't make sense anymore in... Yeah. So many of the encounters that they've built. Now, there's yeah. probably a couple raids we've got a little bit more range on things, but so many places now they've made it to where it's very hard. And a scout mm -hmm. rifle typically is going to be not fast enough to be close. Right. Because things are going to be, I don't know. It's just no, the way they've the designed agree. the game away from those style encounters. Because, I mean, when we got to Iron, I'm um, losing my Destiny history. Third year. Oh, uh, Rise of Iron? Rise of Iron, okay. like the way some of the strikes were set up, they were yeah. all like circles. Yes. So much was a circle. You had to move. You had, you barely had cover. Like 
run around with your chick. Like they got away from the point A to point B. Like you're going to shoot, you know, uh, whether we wanted it or not, we've, whether we've wanted it or not, we like, you're not going to sit at the other side of the room and plink that guy in the head anymore. They don't want that. It was literally, honestly, the spearheaded, what spearheaded it was, um, what's our sniper? Um, Oh, icebreaker did it. We get an icebreaker. Yeah. That was literally the icebreaker. We are changing the design of this game. You are not going to sit in the map, yep. back in the map for hours, plink away, and not engage. And now we're making you move, and we're making less cover. Absolutely, yep. I, I agree. So we got that. We got sniper at sniper rifles. Um, in uh, PvP, auto aim cone by ten percent. I guess they feel they want to make it harder. They want to nerf aim assist there. This is a big one. That the the rocket launchers. Um, we got mm, precision, yep. the high impact frames, and everything else. So it looks like um precisions, the reserve ammo by two. So they're getting two more in in the chamber. And high impacts are also increasing the reserve ammo by two. It deals more detonation damage, less impact for roughly the same total damage. This should make them more effective versus groups when getting splash damage on a target with a damn miss. And the above changes affect Deathbringer. Galley and Truth are about to get the plus two ammo. Is, is that how I'm reading that? Uh, hold on. Yeah, I'm looking at stats. Changes. Like, that's how I read it, but I'm just checking stats that's on stuff huge. right now. Galley getting two more in a joint? Like, yeah, RPM 15, RPM 15. So, yeah, 15 is precision frame. Right. Okay, precision frame. Yep. So, yeah, yeah. those will get. And then high impact. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to check dim right now just to see what examples are. Uh, yeah. And everybody in chat probably knows it faster than me. Mm-hmm. Hot heads and adaptive. Hot heads and high impact. Uh, the new strand high. rocket launcher is one. Okay. I think that's the dungeon one. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, tomorrow's answer. Right. That's so basically high what impact, they're doing is, but they're, yeah, bumping the full, up reserves. They're bumping up reserves for the lower end one. Cause precision, precision is usually all the ones that track and they're the lowest of the damage. Well, and they got so rid they of get, the damage penalty. So now rocket launchers yeah. are just kind of good. They're, they're all pretty universally yeah. pretty good now. They're making it more relevant because aggressives were always the top bill. Like that was the one you went for. So now they're doing that. So salute to that. I think that's cool. Heavy grenade launches. Um, basically, I'm going to summarize because we got a lot to read it and we got to get yeah. to the new stuff. This is the old stuff. So look, heavy grenade launches. What I got from it, you tell me what you feel is that um, they're basically trying to make spike grenade not the de facto yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. choice because we all know what he's doing. We look for spike grenade. Now it's kind of a, a penalty. So it went from the impact damage buff from 50 to 12 percent. So that's that shot. Um, they increased the uh the reserve ammo by six from six yep. to to a maximum ten, which is cool. They increased then, the direct hit damage and the detonation. Yeah, so they bumped it up, damage. and they they're basically making the universal grenade launcher better and spike grenade yes. less required. So a lot yes. of the grenade launchers you have with different types of perks don't need spike to be quite as crucial anymore. Three gigs, yes. Caraxes is back on the menu, boys. Yep. You already know what it is. Pull those Caraxes out if you got those. Yes, I agree. Um, now this was interesting for me on um, wave frame heavy grenade launchers. Only one now, right now. One, and I believe that's the one on Neomuna that's craftable. Yep. Yeah, it's the I'm stasis correct. one, okay. I think, right? Yeah, the stay. I want to use that because they got. Have I got ever? some build. Just I, I, I can't. I, I knew it was garbage when it came out, but it's like if you're going to increase the damage by twenty percent and increase wave width by forty, this could be an ad clear. And I'm curious to see what PvP how that's going to flow. It could be a PvP little, hmm. little, you know, little, 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 what's that joint? The um, the insect joint that we used to have back in the day. They used to chase you. Oh, there, there was an exotic. I know. The insect joint. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Chat, help us out. What was the insect exotic that I never was used no- it? But yeah, it was notoriously oppressive. Colony, thank you, Prescott. And now, obviously, the waveframes don't chase, but if you're putting a bigger with more damage, yeah. watch out for waveframes. Dimensional hyp- dimensional hypotrochoid. Yeah. Bro, I got a sick roll. I got one in the chamber. I think I got like chain reaction and auto. I mean, uh, ambi- the, the the one a- envious assassin, right? I've got the one envious that assassin sh- and one for all. And for a wave frame, one for all actually has some decency to it, but yeah. I still think yours sounds better. Yeah. My main thing with this, and I'll move on, I just want to see in PVE, because who really uses those in the boss account? No. I used <laughs> one is because it was like the first thing I got in the Neo Muna campaign. I was trying to use the things I was picking up. Yeah. And I was trying There's to like light. pump damage out with it and wave through things. It was okay, but like as soon as you kind of find something better, you move yeah, on pretty done. quick. Yeah. So we'll see how that plays out. Um, cast the swords. You got the heavy attack energy cost. Colony, by the way. I don't know if you said Colony, that. Colony, yes. Yep, I said it. Mm-hmm. And then they increase the in heavy attack damage by 16%. Cast is the one you shoot the little. Yeah, the little. Out, right? 
little rotating circle. You like yeah. it shoots a disc out, so they're just making it heavy attack be cheaper, Ooh. hit harder. I still don't know if I'll ever use that as like a DPS thing. Right. It always seems weird to have like a sword for DPS. They really have tried to rework swords so much, mm -hmm. like so guarding much. being more efficient and the way the ammo works and Mm -hmm. They're trying to find the right spot for him, so they keep yeah. wiggling. The rest stuff I consider light as far as exotics. Obviously, visually just wing to change recoil yeah, pattern. Nothing too magy. Nothing too much. Manticore feels like um, fetch as yeah. well. No, no, yeah. no. Just no. Mm -hmm. How are Titans feeling about this edge of action? How are we feeling? That's a hunter feeling? one. Oh, that's the hunter. No, I thought that's the edge of action glaive that goes with the. Isn't that compete with the with the water dawn? Isn't that, that the really us? Maybe it is. Yeah, that's y'all. Well, increase the damage resistance in PvE against all combatants except bosses to 85%, and increase the damage resistance against bosses by 15%. You ain't using that. I'm not going to use it still. No. <laughs> you using that glaive in the exotic spot for that. I, I, they tried with that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah it's like heal clip is cure times two, which is definitely stronger mm -hmm. if you get that out. Mm -hmm. uh, this is all like perks, dual loader, loose change, text balance. Yeah. I want to oh. shout out X Dearest though. I like what they're doing X Dearest though. What um, is that gun? I don't remember. That's the that seasonal is. arc grenade launcher that you don't really have to reload. And then when you kill somebody, it shoots the little moth out. Remember? And the moth detonates. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You okay. can do it with some arc builds. It's a, the it's impact arc damage weapon. of PV by 50. 50%. Maximum rate of fire by 17. Watch out for X Dearest. Now remember, impact damage versus explosion damage. Impact's going to be the lower one. True. But still, bitch, PV and enemies 50%. They said still, total increased damage works out to about 20%, not 50. Still, it's good. It's good now. It is, it is decent. Like, it was, it kind of surprised, and I never, I never used it a ton, but I think it mm. didn't surprise me. It was like, this doesn't suck. It's kind of hard to aim, yeah. to be really accurate with, but I was like, it's. And then you get the catalyst, you, you blind, it yeah. rages faster with the. It, don't sleep on it. Don't sleep on it. Yeah. I, I do like this hill clip. Let's, let's talk about that. Your turn. You get the perks. Oh, heal clip? Uh, heal clip, yeah, 2x. So, I mean, if you put that together, 2x cure is really strong. I remember when that's you kind of got that cooking, it's strong. Jet spot reloading after a kill, you and your... That's a, that's a support yep. tool. Yeah. And that what's about that that dope fusion, was it Eremite? The, the the big one, you mm -hmm. can throw um, heal clip and reservoir burst on that. So, you got the, the explosive damage, and then you reload... Boom, healing yourself and whoever's in vicinity. That's that's nice. There you go. See, Cog's mm -hmm. thinking outside of the box here. Oh, you know I do Trench the barrel. Thing. Oh, I know. You 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 off meta build. You're always fun. Yeah. Yes. Trench barrel can now be activated by dealing damage with ranged attacks. That actually yeah. does make sense. Like yeah, throw a yeah, knife yeah. and then come over here with a shotgun that's buffed. Like it that yeah. makes sense. You don't have to be uh, as high risk with the trench barrel. Yeah, barrel constrictor was fairly experimental, so we shifted into constrained. Now they loosen it up. Loose change is strong in a PvE subclass build, but isn't particularly interesting in PvP, so they added some buffs for that. Dual loader. Thank God. I, th I saw that, and I was just like, Instagon. Remove yeah. the reload penalty. Change the wording of the perk description to make it clear that it increases the number of shots reloaded. We can now apply it to other types of weapons without confusion in the future. I'm mm -hmm. like, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But reload perks for very few things, I'm going to put that as a priority. Yeah. yeah. Text balance stock. I don't. Are you... Dead Man's Tale, yeah. the text mechanical weapons. No, me neither. Yep. Nah, I don't really use them giants. I don't know. It's just it never really clicked to me. I remember when Dead Man's was, was really oppressive, but yeah, not, not really for me, especially not in PvE. So, yeah. I mean, you got Hockey Breach, you got Sundering, Hatchling, activation requirements no longer locked to the archetype in terms of precision or non precision kills. Instead, the perk will trigger with either a precision or three non precision. That's actually good. Yeah. Gives Hatchling a little more room to have some love. Mm -hmm. Target lock now activates later in the magazine for SMGs at 20% instead of 12 and a half. So the damage buff will swing primary weapon gun pets less often. Yeah, they there are sometimes you see them, they make a weapon like a target lock SMG and they're like, what have we done? Yeah. Oh, and it breaks the game. Regret. It breaks the game for like six months because they regret. I Okay. So here's a question. Let's go. They put that out. And I feel like it was one week into one week in trials. They knew that was a mistake. Everyone was like, Bro, "Oh, this is absolutely amazing! Immortal? Everyone needs to farm." Yeah, the immortal. So Let's here's the question. Wow. Let's go. What's the question? Gun comes out like that. Mm -hmm. Pretty freaking busted. Yes, but that's like the main culprit one. Mm -hmm. Turn it off until they fix it. Mm -hmm. Would you? Or, how would um, you think if they're like, "Hey, we are sorry. Immortal is busted." 
We apologize for those of you who grinded it out. Hope you had your fun. We're going to turn it off until we figure out a way to balance this SMG target lock right. combination that's crazy. It's and they just deactivated here, so. one gun that you could use, but everything else mm. is still there. Do you mm. think that would have been a different way to handle the situation? Because sometimes there really are these single outliers. Right. I mean, they have no problem turning off an exotic that's brand new when you buy a season right. pass. This right. is something you, yeah, you went in and earned in Trials of Osiris, but still mm. it's a thing that's pretty busted in the game. Do you think yeah. they should be able to... Do you think they should just turn it off for, say, PvP mm. or something like that? Do you think people would get too pissed off, or do you think the overall fairness of making the game mode not suck for everybody would be better? Look, I, I think it's more of a, the complexity, the fact that this is a PvE slash PvP game. And I mean, that's fair. Yeah, I, I just think that they look at it and the negative effects of having target lock. Remember, it's really more so target lock on SMGs in PvP. Oh, I know. Target lock as a whole really isn't that oppressive. It's actually really good in PvE yeah. for like machine guns yep. and stuff like that, like the 450s and stuff like that. I, so it's a tough one because I feel, yes, like they should be able to say, okay, this is too much of a problem. Let's be able to address it. But there's so much complexity on the back end and then the PvE component, they've just made this. The only time they do it, you notice, is right around raids first. Oh, of course. They mess, they mess oh, yeah. Back. If a new season comes out and something's broken, it's insta off. But yes. yeah, but that's also a problem, in my opinion, because the PvP players would say, hey, this one gun is ruining the experience in PvE, right. but they're going to leave it there for six months. Raid weapon comes out for our raid competition. We want to make sure we, we're going to deactivate five or six different things. So that's where they're... I feel like that's not actually fair. Um, mm -hmm. They have a history of not disabling legendaries, maybe because they have to earn it through RNG. And that's mm -hmm. fine. But maybe it's like, okay, if it sucks in PvE, you can't take it into PvP but you could use it in PVE and it's still something you earned. You can use it in the other half of the game, but in PVE or in PVP, we feel this combination of perk and weapon kind of breaks the game. You guys all show it to us in the stats. Anyway, we're going to turn it off until we figure out a fix for it. And either the gun just kind of falls to the wayside and gets forgotten about. And then PVP is happier. I don't know. That's kind of one of those, because as you said, they will do it for a raid really damn fast, but PVP fast. hangs around for like six months. It feels like yeah. Well, then again, we did realize that they didn't have a dedicated PvP team. I mean, time. there's a whole bit more information we've learned as we go. Just <laughs> yes. in general, though, it's like, hey, one weapon sucks in PvE. Let's fix it. <sighs> it's not, and that, and it wasn't even one archetype. Like SMGs were a thing, and those mm. of they've still brought down. But it's like, if you take that one, and again, that's like kind of a thing. I feel like. Through Vanguard, has always used yeah. the idea of an outlier, whether it's matchmaking for people or, and this is just like, you know, you got your little chart here and this one outlier is like blowing right, up off the chart and be like, else, right, yeah. well, let's make our, our, you know, line a little more reasonable. And yeah. if we take this one out, things look a little better and more reasonable and then we'll figure out what to do. I don't know. I, I, I hope they had the, the ability. I hope it's a situation where they have the ability to do that. Yeah. That'd be dope. Unless we find out that they just you know, can't even do that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Envious Assassin, Assassin each Twitch. activation is now capped at 100% of magazine size instead of 150. And okay. the maximum overflow is now three times the magazine size instead of four. People mm -hmm. are getting a little extra. Bait and switch is down mm -hmm. to 30%, which is going to yeah, change up some DPS. That's going to change up some DPS champions. I was going to say yeah. RIP to Astacross's DPS charts because yeah. it's all over those things he does. Bait and switch is, was out here, you know. There's only a few of them that happen. You know what's funny? I got that on that Trials um, Grenade Launch Adaptive. Yeah. Take a chance to test that out. I was like, I'm gonna have a bait and switch on whatever that rocket is for Apex Predator. I have a reconstruction. Try to true, um, sorry, reconstruction bait and switch Apex Predator. Oh. Like, ooh, and I didn't actually craft that one. And the reason I haven't actually gone in there as much is because I got that drop mm, before I got to. the red frame unlocks. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I didn't have to go as far in there. I yeah, still need to get it. those patterns though. Yeah, salute. Cataclysm, another one. Yep. Yeah, rest in peace. I'll say rest in peace. Thirty-five to thirty. It just won't be the de facto. You know, like how it was before with the with the linears, linear fusions. It was the de facto solar one. So, yeah, some other perks are gonna are gonna come up and compete with a uh, bait switch now. Yep. Uh, let's see mods, bonus damage against mini bosses should have been part of boss specs, not majors. Mm hmm. Mini boss. Don't I guess should have been part of boss spec. Not major specs. So majors I'm trying are trying to remember boss. what mini bosses are because previously the, the, major or mm -hmm. not boss spec, major spec is what you would use for champions. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember what mini bosses count for. 
I believe it's a it's the um the or like the what? energy bar color. So just and anything with, like with that yellow bar, yeah, as opposed to the so. orange for major. Which okay, so champions still should be the same. I guess there's just certain enemies that are like bosses and mini bosses and gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, that's all. That's all. That's how I look at it. So the future, Check. we pulled a lot of yep, balance changes. Right. Yellow bars with non-unique names. Yeah. We've pulled a lot of balance changes from the final shape and Destiny 2 into the light update into Ooh. update 7.3.5, but we still have a number of small but exciting changes shipping in into the, into the light, touching content many players haven't thought about in several years. I'm still wondering what Into the Light is going to be. That's kind of... You want to know why a lot of people are not playing Destiny right now? We don't know what Into the Light is. Yeah. Not a whole lot to prepare for, not a lot to do. We know Final Shape has this. We don't know much about episodes besides what they told us. Like, there's mm -hmm. so much question right now with what the future holds. And I'm hoping... I feel like the longer they wait, they mm -hmm. keep incrementing that bar a little bit higher to make people excited. Because if you tell people mm -hmm. early on what it is and they can kind of start piecing it together and figuring it out, you have yeah. some expectations that get set. The longer mm -hmm. you don't tell people, the hopes keep getting higher. Yeah, yeah, no, I get that. I get so, that, that's fair. I don't know. We'll see when it all comes together, but in final shape, we're rebalancing many weapon types in PVE. Buffing oh. underperforming weapons, leaving most high performers untouched, which I appreciate for PVE. Nice. Since we're nice. looking at PVE weapons tuning anyway, over the course of the year of Final Shape, again, this is tuning over the course of the next year, which is crazy to think about, we'll be looking at weapon mods that feel mandatory, and we intend to make some changes that will increase player choice, particularly in PVE. I'm okay with that. Uh, we're also making substantial changes to several of the least used exotic weapons. We see a lot of requests for these, so you can guess yes. which exotics they touch. Jesus. And adjusting some perks, including a long requested change to kill clip, making it more viable to use on slow firing weapons. Well, yeah, if you take chill clip, even though they kind of nerfed it on, yeah. like, say, Deliverance versus Riptide, you would never use it on Deliverance because of how it worked. Yeah. But now, like, if something is slower firing but then hits chill clip harder, then harder. it would give Deliverance life. That would be mm -hmm. kind of where that goes. Agreed. Uh, God, there's Sandbox. even so much more for Crucible Sandbox. Yeah, this is a lot. I mean... It, All right, it, hold on. Let me see if I can skim. Yeah, we got to skim. Okay, we, goals. We, we get to do stuff. Help players to more clearly understand the sequence of events. Okay, I do remember hearing something about this. Help players mm -hmm. clearly understand the sequence of events that led to their death so mm -hmm. that they can more easily learn to improve. After the weapon sandbox... Uh, at, Alter the weapon sandbox to account for increased average skill of our player base. Yes, your player base is getting smaller, so the ones who are still here mm -hmm. play a lot. Mm -hmm. Encourage primary weapon mastery to be an aspirational pursuit for players. Right. Uh, so the symptoms of kind of what they describe have been generated by a handful of root causes. We have certain ability builds with either higher uptime or higher potency than we believe is healthy. Uh, yeah. Keep those builds in check. We, we've we provided a near constant av availability of special ammo, which means there's always a surplus of one-shot kills on the field. Uh, mm -hmm. And to keep primary weapons competitive, we've made primary weapons highly lethal, fast killing Ooh. in general, very un or also very forgiving. Mm -hmm. All that leads to a high percentage of deaths on our sandbox where the target's perspective feels like there's nothing they could have done. Prime right. example is like the quick switch between bow, hand, can, and follow-up. Yep. You, you, you die faster it. than you know it can happen. Be like, what happened? My group. The player health is going up by 30, which means your total Ooh. number is going to go up to like 231. Big. Um, they haven't ever, I can't think of the last time they touched that. So that yeah, will change that. number of shots for kills. Like mm -hmm. depending on, do you need one more hand cannon shot or X this and that and the other? Like auto rifles will need X more number of bullets. So it will slow down some things. Yeah. But also I think when they get through a lot of this, it will slow down Body shots being effective. Body shot being precision effective. shots will be your focus. So if you are good at your precision shots, your time to kill they're going for, not really yeah. changing. And yep. that rewards skill. Yes. As opposed to bullet spam, which, you know, your anti-auto rifle people will be happy about. <laughs> yes, which I've always been preaching yeah. from day one. Let's get it back to skill. And the pulse is a skill weapon as opposed to the auto rifle. Oh, I've always <laughs> loved pulses, so you don't get a whole lot of argument out of me. I'll take my data rifle all the way. But yeah, change in health is actually big. Like that's one we haven't seen, but the change in health with the focus on crits versus bodies, yeah. it's an interesting way to do it because they bump, like the crit damage goes up, but the body shot stays the same or however they tweak it. Mm -hmm. That just means your criticals mean that much more. Yeah. It's an interesting way to change it. It's not one I would have even, this is one of those times gamers don't always know what they want. This is an mm -hmm. interesting way to focus on skill being rewarded. 
by increasing yes. crit and health, but leaving body lower. It's like, I and, wouldn't have put all of those pieces together, but it's kind of a cool idea. Yeah, good, good, good start. Uh, ability cooldowns. So melee grenade yeah. class ability cooldowns now have a 15% applied to them in Crucible only. Now this I appreciate when it says in Crucible only. Only, yeah, don't you do that. Yeah, don't builds. make PvE, PvE slow. Yeah, don't do that. Super cooldowns have a 20% penalty. Uh, for them in Crucible only again. So PvE only or PvP only, you can do yeah. all you want in there to make that as balanced as you like. I don't mm -hmm. care. Agreed. Uh, ability damage. So it's account for the health and the reduced uptime. Super base damage is up by 31%. Melees mm -hmm. are up by 16%. Grenades increased, increased one grenade. <laughs> so flux. weird. The arc flux grenade by 16%. That is so bizarre. That means that grenade must really be weak. Mm -hmm. uh, primary weapon archetypes increase. This is all crit damage. So yeah. increase crit damage by 14% for pulse, auto, sidearm, scouts, hand cannons, increase crit, reduce mm -hmm. body shot, uh, yeah. reduce flinch dealt by players, submachine guns, increase crit, reduce body, bows, mm -hmm. reduce base damage. They're really crapping on bows. Yeah. They're going in. Bows uh, are getting it. Getting that work. So special weapons is now going to be like yeah. an ammo counter. So you ammo get kills. Counter. As you get kills, you build up the, and again, different modes with more or less people will kind of have a variation. As you get a kill, you get a certain amount of points towards your special ammo. When you get your special ammo full, you get a couple of bullets. Mm -hmm. It's a different way to do it, so I'll be kind of curious how that feels. What do you think on the special mm -hmm. ammo? More rewarding kills? Yeah, do you think this makes the rich richer, though? Is that an argument some people might worry about? It, it's val. I mean, you could you could see it, because from my understanding, this stuff carries also into the next round, I believe, right? So... Pretty sure. I still like the overall spirit of it, which is reward the gunplay, primary gunplay first, right? And then you get that. Because I, I do think, let's just be honest, people are still running around with their specials, their fusions, their shotguns, or whatever it is they're using as a primary tool because it's just low, you know, it's low risk. You just go up there and one-shot somebody. So they want to get it back to the primary. So again, I'm not going to say this is the perfect solution just yet. I want to see how it, how, we, how it applies, but I do like the spirit of the change. Yeah, so general notes outside of your counts that you get. Kills mm -hmm. from special ammo and heavy ammo do not grant points towards special ammo meter, so it is truly primary right. focus rewarding. Jumping off the map will subtract progress. Ah. Ammo is not dropped on death, and you mm. will not lose the special ammo you have earned when you are defeated or revived, so okay. it's on you until you use it. Okay. Uh, earned special ammo will carry over between rounds when rounds are an option and swapping yeah. between from double primary weapons to a special weapon will reset your special progress. So yeah, you can't use two different primaries and then swap over mid trials yeah. match. They're going to yep, stop trying to hustle. We know what y'all doing. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. Trace shotgun fusions, base damage is up. Trace. Blaves, melee and projectile damage is up. Heavy mm -hmm. weapons, uh, heavy grenade launchers, reduce detonation damage by 5%. Machine guns, base damage up by 20%. Exotics, Fighting Lion, less damage versus Crucible. Devil's Ruin, decrease the charge beam against players in Crucible, 20%, 15%. Crimson, reduce the flinch dealt to players by almost 20%. Forerunner, increase damage versus players by 20%. It is special, wow. so I guess when you get that damage, you can make wow. a count. Symmetry, increased Revolution, which is the alt fire Ooh, mode, I think, damage yes, yes. versus players by 16%. Me and Merc love that gun. I, yeah. I want it. I got I, I, It's a sexy exotic I, I want that exotic to be dope so yeah, yeah. I wanna, I wanna, i'll give it a shot and then one of the cooler emblems we've had in a while happy lunar new year it's a free oh. one i think everybody can get the code um mm -hmm. but that's just a cool emblem for the lunar year, new year with the okay. uh, ribbon and the yeah oh, the, yeah the dragon exotic ornaments though uh Ooh. i don't know if that's actually still going on the lunar new year bro i'm no, a the humble bit, bundle I, I was actually i meant to talk can about I, can this. i complain oh you can do whatever you want all right you got to admit, these, these ornaments are sexy, right? The dragon, the red, and the gold. Why a dragon breath ain't get this? Like, no dragon breath got the ugliest ornaments. And I'm yeah. sitting there, I'm like, man. I mean, they're going a, back to the a, World War II fighter. It's what they're doing with that one. It's just its I own it, style. Can we get the dragon joy for dragon breath? I mean, breath? I'm with you. I'm not arguing. I'm just saying I'm that's like, why, but... Like, All right, hold cool. on. There's going to be a small switch. I'm going to switch Discord servers okay. here. Just a no right. doubt. No doubt. Um, okay. Just centralized yeah, it between yeah. the two of us. Yeah, that's all. Because I'm sitting there and I'm looking at, because I believe that's um, Two Tail Fox, right? That got it. Two Tail Fox mm -hmm. got the. Uh, isn't yep. that that? Mm -hmm. That's what that is. I'm like, man, I want that for Jack. 
Well, then, like Risk Runner. I actually can't think of the last time I used Risk Runner. Used There's certain game. occasional points, but pretty rare anymore that that gets it. It's very odd. Mm -hmm. And it's a free one. I'm always actually surprised it's... I know. When you get exotics for, you know, non-expansion mm -hmm. related stuff. Yeah, good point. But yeah. So now we get to the new, new stuff now, man. Eh? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The one thing I did want to talk about, though, because... Let's yeah. go. Talk about it. Humble Bundle, still there for yes. six more days. Mm -hmm. Now, this right here is what we've all been talking about for so long. Yes. For $40 right now, you can get Witch Queen, Beyond Light, the Forsaken Pack, the 25th or the 30th anniversary pack, Lightfall, and the Season Pass mm. for $40. Oh, wow. Wow. But this is only through Humble Bundle. This is only for a limited time. Limited time. Get it by that. And again, it's on Humble Bundle. Not everybody even knows that site exists. That is true. This is the type of package that you need to put on Steam and consolidate 17 down into one. And then you can have Final Shape and its thing over here. But you want, just literally make it Destiny 2. They call it the Story So Far so Bundle. Far. They've done all the work. This is <laughs> all you need to do. Just put this on yes. Steam. Yes. That's it. Agreed. And you say, Agreed. hey, you get everything that's happened so far in Destiny for $40. That's mm -hmm. it. Yeah, and you have three love months it. to try and catch up on a whole bunch of whatever. Yeah, I love I love the marketing, the story so far. Like uh, it, it, it they literally were, they did all the work. It's all yeah, right it there. Itself. Yeah, and it's forty dollars. I'm like, that is a good price point because we're done with all the seasons. Nothing's yeah. fresh and new. Like, and again, the f the Forsaken pack still exists. I know that's what? hilarious. See, we know why the the, the forty percent target why. <laughs> They got to get this money. But, okay, this goes back to a thing. I have to ask, on, and this is, again, where I would love to see the financials in the books, be like, how mm -hmm. many people are buying the Transmog thing? How many people are right. buying that? And especially now, as the mm -hmm. population gets lower, mm -hmm. you got to remove friction. Right. you got to remove friction for more new people to come into this thing. Team Destiny 2 for they can pack. I just want to see how much this still costs right now, just completely right. on its own. Um, 20 bucks still $20 oh, right now you want to know 20? what it's rated recent reviews 19 of them so there's not a lot of people doing this mostly negative 19 reviews it is rated 36% mm. positive so mostly negative like mm. you're just pissing you get people like uh, Travis's friends who come mm -hmm. in and they oh, yeah, talk to us good. about their new player experience. You get a pop-up of a story. You get, here's one story mission. Cool, here's the campaign. Now pay us money to play the rest of it. Why is two-year-old story not free? You I mean, and not free. <laughs> there you are some why. business decisions you got to make. Mm -hmm. And then there are some that are going to be a long, and you got to look in front of your nose. You got to look past your nose. And right mm -hmm. now they're looking this far. I and I know it's a financial business corporate he, cog's going to put his hat on. The board is about to be dissolved if they do not reach these targets. I know. You're going to get this. this. It's desperate times right now, brother. You, I, I feel so you. So let's I, drive I, I people it. away from it. If you do not sell, you are gone. <laughs> okay this that's comes... what we're dealing with now. no no i totally I, I get know it the gamer is talking but this game will not exist in the in the current straight structure that it I, is no i understand the board is afraid of losing i get that but here's okay. the thing we do realize wait, wait we do realize the weight of this no i know fully do okay here's the so discussion we're gonna eliminate the monetization uh, chance uh, that mm. we have for the player population right now frustration with this no, and here's it. the thing mm -hmm. the population you have right now mm -hmm. i would love to know and this is again sat there and mm -hmm. had a discussion with chef andy on the floor mm -hmm. of gcx yes, i'm like absolutely. i want to okay. know and i asked and i was like what i would love because i do new player stuff i do things for right. like people who don't have a lot of information i mm -hmm. would love to know what are your bounce off points I'm not in product per se in like web design, but I've got a couple of friends who are. You talk about right. a funnel. You get to a website. They want to get you to check out and hit play. That's their goal. Right. How mm -hmm. many different play, how many different pieces do you have to go through to get to that final point? And my question right. is, where are these fall off points? Do you right. start out? Is it when the first thing pops up and then it asks for money? Right. God, that's okay. We got to fix that. 
That's the mm-hmm. analytics I would love to see and understand. Course, and this course. is, again, the financial piece of what I would love to know. How much are you selling? But again, you are bleeding a player base mm-hmm. or a game. Marathon doesn't exist yet. Right. Looking at probably 2025. So you got a year. Mm-hmm. Do you want to? And again, this is where I'm like, how many people are buying all these little Forsaken packs and stuff? Now, I don't know mm-hmm. how long when I looked up the other website. The pricing is just bad. Final Fantasy is now on Xbox and more competition is going to hit them. Yeah, it's like it's. They've got away with it for long enough. Right. And they've made whatever money they have. They've got a giant new campus and all that stuff. But Mm -hmm. at some point, there has to be a decision to say, hey, Mm -hmm. if we do good things for the consumers. And I know that's a stupid thing to say. But this is where I don't know the analytics. If the analytics mm-hmm. say we have twenty people buying the Forsaken pack every single day, right. and if what we if, pull, what if the analytics say people are buying this, if they do, then I am sorry. And we're going to stop the check this month for the good of the community because we love you no, guys. I know, no, we don't want to pay our rent. This is the we problem love with the, you guys. <laughs> so this is the problem with that. I would be curious to see. Hey, somebody buys the Forsaken pack. They're like, hey, I got it free. I was told Forsaken was first. I buy this. Then, okay, so they do have some newer people buying that. That's where I want to know, like, what's the overlap of the Venn diagram of new players? And they buy that. How many people are sitting in the middle of that Venn diagram that keep playing? When they realize the $20 that they spend and those 19 Steam reviews, not a lot, by the way, but again. Steam reviews aren't aren't indicative of actual engagement. I know, I know, I know. But again, like, if both of the ones that do actually review it aren't great, that's a small sign. It, so it's like, are your practices that you are doing where you make some here, some here, some here, still mm-hmm. sending away your player base? And, and again, is that, and that's the question that is really hard for a right. lot of businesses to see is the short term decision to make a little right. bit of money and to put a little bit in our pocket now versus are we going to try and build the player base back up, right. which is something we are struggling with. And as we right. are a live service game, if we don't keep these players around versus drive them mm-hmm. away with pop-ups saying play, pay money all the time and every little mm-hmm. expansion and you go look at when the humble bundle doesn't exist, it's $240 mm-hmm. to try and play destiny. You're like, this is a six-year-old expansion. What are you doing? I, I get it. I, and all I would say is we got to get back to the core of power, which we learned, which was uh, Lightfall. Lightfall destroyed Lightfall. Player, player sentiment. And yeah. now that player sentiment is here, you know, they, they are all banking on final shape to be a high-quality product. And to your point, if they're going to make that decision, it has to be in conjunction with Final Shape being good and then this overall structure change for goodwill to say, hey, we've listened, we've actually taken the feedback, we delivered a good product, and now we're going to relax some of these things that we had in place because they were just too oppressive. They were too oppressive to the Now, what's going to annoy me about that? What's going on? How close they do that to final shape. Because you know, oh, you, know they're going, you know what's gonna happen. Oh, I know. And but what you could do right now over the course of the next three months is start getting more people into the game, getting more community talk around. You get three months. That's what you got. You got March, April, and May. You got yeah. three months where you could have these deals out there. It's just indefinitely on sale until final shape. Hey, do you want to experience this thing? Right. We've got a cinematic in the game now, giving you some yeah. background. The mm-hmm. whole thing's 40 bucks. Mm-hmm. you like everything we just gave you for 40 then you can jump into final shape and be with everybody else and you got three months of downtime it. to love be able it. to do that and then they're going to be like hey see these wonderful little analytics that say we make more money if we don't do that <laughs> and i'm like that's fine but i also want to you got to dig a little deeper into those analytics and say right do you buy somebody's like hey you should probably buy witch queen right okay well let me go try and get stasis <laughs> must purchase uh, what's this Forsaken thing over here? I need this exotics. Must purchase. Right. What? How do I get Gallahorn? I've heard that's must purchase. Mm-hmm. When that keeps hitting people in the face anymore, and oh, especially oh, yeah. like oh, yeah. now is there so much competition for gaming? Mm-hmm. Um, that's again one of those. But again, not a bit, not seeing their books, not understanding mm-hmm. how much these little nickel and dimes make. How and I get, it is. And I get mm-hmm. that. And I get that. But there is a point where I would be really curious to see Mm-hmm. post the analytics of hey we sell this many a day i'm like okay the people who buy those mm-hmm. how long do they stay right that that's no, the that's, that's the that's questions that's i that's would that's be that's curious that's and, and we yeah, will never know not, that yeah that's data i'm not privy to but no i think is. what should we got to look we got to extrapolate from the humble bundle is that this is a sign in the right direction 
We have to say that. Yes. The fact no, that I know. It's small, that, that, yeah. But it's, it's good to see the consolidation of over monetized content actually put in a fair price and then saying, okay, this is how we should do it. So maybe this is something that they are now internally getting there. Now, remember, the developers in them would tell them, hey, the community doesn't like this. Yep. Hey, guys, you know. And then we saw what happened, the layoffs and all this other stuff, and the target's not reached. So that's how I look at it. I'll say at least this is giving me an idea that they understand that, and now let's kind of implement that on a mass stage uh, level, with, especially with Steam, the way the structure is there. So. I feel like I've gone on some rants this podcast. Yeah, I apologize, no, you everybody. No, you're good. You're good. It's just when I saw this one, I was like, yes, this is an amazing deal, but this is about what it should be right now for everybody. And all that old stuff should easily be a bundle. Like, I, like Final Shape, Shape's technically not out. So this is your current mm -hmm. expansion. All the old right. stuff should have been there long ago. And we yeah, all know that. I agree. We all know that. Absolutely. All right. Well, longest podcast in the world is going to keep going. Sorry, everybody. Uh, PvP Strike Team update. So since the PvP strike team was formed, the bulk of our work has been focused on finding solutions for five major issues. Maps, rewards, game oh. modes, sandbox issues, and matchmaking. So we are going to be talking about more PvP. Mm -hmm. So to help with this, we've made some substantial quality of life passes on existing maps. So they've got uh, spawning quality of life pass, uh, spawn trap issues... Um, map spawning quality of life, more less spawn trapping. If it's a big map, you spawn more forward. Yeah, yep. um, major tuning of initial spawns, heavy ammo crates, tiebreaker zones. Like they've actually had the strike team working on each map, diving into the details. How does it play? What feels wrong? Maps too big. You're not going to be running from the back of disjunction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when you God. get that back spawn, oh, you're like, God. it's going to be 30 seconds just for me to do a half mile jog Whoa. just to get back into battle. And then you get shot in the head once and you're like, fuck. This chunk's just so frustrating for that. Mm hmm. Um, Shout out to Outsanity. Gifted some memberships. Yo, Outsanity. What are you doing, man? Five Hello. gifted memberships out there on YouTube. Uh, you've got Outsanity, Verbal, Zach, Dramatic, and Sanchez. Enjoy your memberships. Thank you for the YouTube love. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Um, so they're really going into the nitty gritty of maps and spawns and timings. And I appreciate that because sometimes yeah. if you do want to jump into PVP, it doesn't feel wonderful to mm -mm. be. Mm -mm. Back of Disjunction is probably the worst example, but that is, that is a vibe in and of itself. You're like, oh. Oh yeah, that bro, that's the most. I'll just you you're just like, nah, I'm like after that match, you're like, yeah, I'm kind of good. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm oh, out. Yeah. Maps. We Hello. get maps in Woo! May's update. Let's get it. Adding three new maps to Crucible. Eventide Labs. Europa map. Wow. We get a map that corresponds with an expansion? From how wow. many years ago? <laughs> Three years ago, we get a map from not Lightfall, not Witch Queen, Woo! Beyond Light. Beyond Light, baby. Woo! The, the long lost map we never got. Let's yep. go. That's how things used to be. B. Remember when the expansion came out, you got a PvP map that corresponded to it? Yeah, this is a weird concept. Uh, we get a Neo Muna map. This is actually Ooh. same relative wow. year. I know it's a little past, yeah. but it was a year and about was it like going to be a year and three months by the time we get the Neo Muna map? But you know, that's like, that's got to be there. That's got to be a record in the past however yeah. many days since we've had anything in this game. Mm -hmm. And then Dissonance is a terraformed Ooh. pyramid ship. Kind of curious what that raid. means. That's that might be joint. closer to final shape kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm, that, thinking, I'm thinking Rule of Nightmares. Yeah, that's probably true with the Terraform. Terraform, remember yeah, the yeah, yeah. Yep. Terraform the thing? That's Rule of Nightmares, baby. We, we, we messing around with Nazarek area. Yeah, so you get two for this year. So mm. we're getting there. Uh, oh. rewards, also PVP rewards. Now this is where I, I miss Travis. I was going to, I was going to get him because I, I love the fact they said it. It's like, yeah. So, oh, actually, let, let, let me read this one. Let me yeah, get this, this one. All you, all this, you. this one's for me, Travis. I wish you was here because I was going to be very messy with you. Um, rewards. We want Crucible to feel at least as rewarding as PVE. Wow. Hmm. I wonder who said that? It Rewards. is a looter. Shooter. Shooter. What one of those words us, is wait, what's yeah, what oh, you, you have shooting, us, but you also have what's have the other looting. word? Oh, looting. looting. Okay, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because someone used to tell be, me uh, I love your PvP I love your term. It's game. not it's not anything I ever Pure. thought I would use in this situation, but the word your use of the word messy 
Yes. Is this right now? No, this I'm is completely messy. Oh, yeah. absolutely. He can't but defend himself right now, so mm -mm. I'm going in too. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah, it's worse when he's not here oh, to be like, no. When, that's what I can control. This the podcast would be three hours long if Travis exactly. was here we, tonight. We, to we crap all over right now. Out. Yeah. So shout out to the PVP team that kind of sees what Cog has been saying for so long here on the last word. Um, post got, um, we want Crucible to feel at least as rewarding as PVE. With post game drops on par with strike activities in form of rewarding materials and activity specific loot, we also want PV play players to have more consistent methods of being rewarded with build crafting materials. Hello, ascended shards. Mm -hmm. That this has led us to make the following changes, which are currently available in game. So currently, we got the end of match rewards, more glimmer enhancement score crucible. I have seen that in trials when I've been playing. Double re reward boosters for PVP. Competitive already live. We got the weapon focusing and then we got the second tier the competitive weekly challenge that also awards uh, ascendant allies they now we're also looking to improve our end game rewards while some players may choose to play only a few competitive games per week we like to reward players who continue to remain active in competitive we'll be offering two major incentives for continued success now here is the big one e Arno. this armor in competitive crucible before we even continue now some people would Thoughts, also like to see this in please. trials like trials just oh, yes. drop one too yes i would absolutely. say that should be there but how are we feeling how are we feeling about this i mean for the pvp people it's amazing because artifice armor mm. being buried in dungeons mm. master it isn't mm. master raids right mm -hmm. like okay yeah just yep master yeah. master raids and dungeons those are the only ones i know yeah so mm -hmm. yes of course yeah absolutely give you rewards mm -hmm. let somebody who goes high level and do all these things in pvp be able to get armor that is equal to a thing so if a beast pvp person and beast pv person go excel in their activities they both can have the loot that is generally equivalent outside of the gear that you get in specific activities Facts. absolutely and as armor as artifice armor is basically only stat related and when stats being probably more in pvp than they do in pve depending on what you're doing outside of like rebuilds but a lot of people are i mean you're down to seconds in pvp for who's gonna get the super first do i have that one grenade on reload is my yep. shield back just in time like mm -hmm. stats make a difference there so yep. no 100 percent. probably should also mm -hmm. put a piece in the chest as the trials chest because yeah you have enough rng between where the stats are going to be distributed Agreed. how high the stat roll is if you go flawless you damn sure should at least get one piece and be like hey i got a slightly better one than i already grinded mm -hmm. out in pve cool Mm -hmm. But right now, that's not there. But yeah, sure, yeah. put it in comp two. Not arguing, believe yeah. me. But I just not arguing. trials too. And, 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 it, and let's be honest, it, it, it's kind of needed comp because comp has been so dead. Comp, yeah, you know what I mean. Like it, it kind of needed it, and I, and I like it also because even though we're not going to get back to the days of the mountaintop and the recluse, we're getting something in the mode that's worth the grind, that's worth continued engagement. So, provided these artifices armors. Are not good seven. Oh, and not fifty-seven. No, didn't now. they say oh. it? I think I read it too. Okay. This okay. high stat armor. I high hate. That, I hate that. That's a vague definition. High stat mm. for me is a minimum of sixty-four. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, and if you go through and you do comp and you actually spend your time in comp and you get a mm. sixty-four, you can get a sixty-four that has twenty, like thirty mobility and just chunk it in the trash. Yeah. So yeah, yeah you got enough RNG in there. Throw it at them. I am fine oh, with that. Wow. No doubt. Another big change, they're going to increase the drop rate chances for exotic weapon catalysts on victory. So like Artifice Armors, you get a meaningful way to upgrade the guard's power. Um, That's just the chance competitive. for them to like drop, right? Yeah. Because yeah. I feel the drop rates are low. I, I, play, yeah. I play a lot of PvP and I don't be seeing a lot of stuff yeah. drop. I felt like in D1 it was actually a little bit more. I mean not D1, but early in, in D2. So you got that. And now they're adding a you said a third tier competitive weekly challenge. So it's a whole new tier, right? For... um what you call it, the Artifice Armor. The tier will be unlocked for all players who reach a gold rank three above each season. The tier will require match victories instead of completions. And then upon completion of the challenge, each victory thereafter will have a chance to drop Artifice Armor and the drop rates will increase alongside your rank. Competitive matches will also have an incre increased chance to drop exact we weapon catalysts on victories. Now, trials, they get into this whole effort versus reward. Now, these are big, man. We're going with the, what, what, as far as the flawless, flawed card reward. Yeah, so the trials passages. Yeah, the passages, man. So again, currently live. We already know we get the 50% chance to get trials weapons on wins. I have seen this in effect. That has been happening. Yeah, flawed card rewards as well, like five and right? 
Yep. Yeah. Now these are the big ones. Passage of ferocity. So get your trials passages out, y'all. If you have not been flawless for the week, losses after three wins will reset you back to three wins instead of flowing your card. How we feel so about that? If you ferocity? can get, dude. I mean. Trials is obviously a shell of what it used to be, and Travis would probably agree with that. But if you get more people that will stick in it and be like, oh, I'm back down to three. But if you at least you get to that three point, is ferocity where you get the double win? Is that the um, I, believe, I can't I remember. Or is that forgiveness or something? Forgiveness. I know forgiveness is the one. Yeah, I think ferocity might be the double win. Like if you get like your Old third, it counts for two or something. I forget yeah, how that works. Like that's that. the one yeah. that works. Yeah, how much mm -hmm. I play trials. Yeah, um, you could tell I just use mercy, so I wasn't even using. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I was using. Uh, I never cared about actually going to the lighthouse, so I was just—I probably did this one because if I ever got that, like, even if it was wins or losses, it would always just be yeah. one. But no, the fact that you get partway there and then you can come back and try again yeah, for your first right. time, yeah, like, yeah, I mean, at this point, you're just giving more people a chance and still not knocking them all the way back to the bottom of the hill. I forget mm -hmm. which Greek discussion. God oh, version, yeah. rolling the stone up the hill. Now you don't rolling have to start at the hill. bottom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now this is the big one. Somebody uh, in chat will have their knowledge of the name. Sisyphus, all that stuff. I forget. Sisyphus? That actually sounds right. I think, I think it's I watched Sisyphus, Percy yeah. recently. Sisyphus. Yep. Three geeks. Yeah, shout out three geeks. He's on it. So now, passage of persistence. This one's huge. Losses following a win will remove the win from your card. Consecutive losses do not remove additional wins. Getting the seven wins grants you a drop of the weekly adept weapon, regardless of how many losses you have taken. So the passage works like a trailing backstop. Once you have at least one win recorded on the passage, a loss will remove the most recent win instead of flowing it. Since consecutive losses will not remove additional wins, winning two games in a row adds a permanent win to the card, and win streaks longer than two add additional permanent wins. Yeah. You can only go flawless on this passage if you do not have a win removed. Once a win has been removed, you can no longer get flawless using this passage, but you could still earn a roll of the weekly adept weapons. And before we uh, uh, talk about it, I don't know if you saw the Destiny account today. They actually gave an update to this because it seems like there seems to be some confusion. So let me pull that up because the Destiny, if you look at the Destiny uh, Twitter account, they um, I guess people were asking about that and they went even more in depth let me just pull it up for y'all guys sorry about that i remember seeing it so we got i think it's in the replies because people were going crazy da, 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 da. oh man i can't find it now please i had it i had it i had it it's going i can't find it but they they gave more clarity for it if someone remembers what uh what it was or what, what the, the actual link or the, or the tweet so they were they were asking more in depth about it, and it's pretty much clarification that you know obviously the flawless stop and stuff like I mean the trailing backstop. But while I find that, what is your initial thoughts on the passage of persistence? You muted, you muted. E. Sorry about that. Um, no, I mean yes. Like if somebody is willing to stick it out, the name says it all. If you are persistent. You will eventually get yourself up to that point where mm -hmm. you can get a weapon. Now, do you get to go to the lighthouse and get the full smorgasbord? No. Okay. But if your goal is trying to get a drop of the adept weapon to unlock the adept weapon, so then you can actually try and spend engrams on it, which are not cheap. It's usually like five or ten engrams or something crazy. But if you can get to that point and get you an adept weapon by sticking with it, especially as a solo player, that is somebody who will play more. And if you want Bro, people in the playlist, this so is exactly mean. what it's for. Bro, this is so me. I, I'm look, I'm not I'm never gonna be the trials guy. I'm not gonna be Travis, you know, but I'm the person that I would currently play trials in the way that I'm just grinding to get the seven wins. I don't even care about the flawless like anymore sometimes. I'm just trying to grind to get the seven, try to get my main thing is getting the weapon so I have the ability to focus on it, right? That was my main thing. And this is, we got to think about the health of the casual base. The majority is just not going to the lighthouse. We just got to keep it no. real. But if you give this guy who says, yo, I'll play, and you just giving me a loss, because let's be honest, you know, and I know the hardcore may not like this, but it's like, that is going to keep a casual in it. Because it's demoralizing when you get that, car, that card floored. You know, sometimes you can't even get past, you get in a bad stretch, you can't get past two, two or three wins one week. It gets like that. So I think this is great. I love the way this is designed. I love the fact that it earned you a roll of the weekly adept weapon. I like the fact that it still doesn't give you a flawless, right? You yep. know, you still won't get that. 
but at least you get the weapon. But you get That's... some loot. You don't have quite yeah. the prestige, but you get some loot that you mm -hmm. can start grinding out and focusing for. Yep. No, nope. yeah, me. I see no problem That's... with that. We're also adding additional rewards for yeah. match completions by three person fire teams. This is another thing the three person population. I don't know if you saw the tweet from Destiny Bulletin or whoever it was. The three person population is mm -hmm. tiny. Got you got cold. solos, you got solos, oh, and then you got yeah. duos, because duos yes. are basically double matching because mm -hmm. it's easier than playing threes where people are stacked. They're basically mm -hmm. dodging three stacks. Yeah, I um, found the tweet now. I found it. I'm looking. Uh, to mm -hmm. clarify a few things, passive or progress on this card, like all other passages, is reset weekly. Yep. When we said permanent in the twin, we mean could not that wins that those wins could not be removed by losses, patches of persistence. Mm -hmm. Has a trailing backstop. Get two wins, you can't drop a low one. Get three wins, can't drop a low two. Yeah. So if you get yeah. to six, you're going to have to, if in I'm trying to think how high you can get and lose. So if you get to right. six and lose, you would go back to five. So you'd have mm -hmm. to get to five and win twice, right? right? That's okay. Yeah. And then they said another added, they said you could reset your card and do this passage again for another adept reward. But it doesn't oh. un unlock adept farming the same way going flawless does. So you can't uh, farm engrams for it at... Got it. Okay. That's I mean, you're still getting some... It gives you a chance to get a drop you wouldn't get, but you still mm -hmm. need to get to the lighthouse to be fully rewarded. It's an yeah. interesting balance. And this is like... Yeah. This is the stuff that I you have to give them credit for because this and the previous twit when I was saying... Mm -hmm. You know, would I go about the idea of rewarding critical shots, rewarding mm -hmm. accuracy, rewarding skill, and then body shots being less with the health and the critical? This is another mm -hmm. thing where it's like, I wouldn't have come up with these changes, and I don't know how many people I know who would come up with these changes, but I think they're pretty good from what I mean, I you got to see them in action. But from what I'm reading, yeah. and again, no. looking through Twitter feedback as well, I mean, when somebody like Shadow, yeah, I saw Shadow. He's an excellent twab. Like, yeah, I mean, as much it. as some of these people love PvP and have very specific thoughts about it, when mm -hmm. they're happy, you know, they did something right. Like they, I mean, the people that are cooking on this stuff right now, they are they're cooking. Yeah, I, I mean, it almost feels like having a dedicated PvP team has its advantages. That's kind of awesome, right? You did can you have to go there? <laughs> this is like you don't need to get... call out that. <laughs> I'm that, being messy. I'm being messy. Yeah, you're 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 stick. You're Jeff Grubb been like all day. Yeah, yeah. I'm being, I'm being messy. But here's the thing. That this is the part I really wish Trav was here for because I would love his feedback. Which is the next thing about the three person fire team. Yeah. We know Trav is team three person purity of trials. Yeah, and the population and sucks too. So he he's got two arguments for it. He's got two arguments right against it because he's like, look, nobody's everybody's doing solos now. Then the duo. So now they're saying, although they said they want to add rewards for match completions for these three person fire teams and trials, although you do not need to win to earn these rewards, they are participation gated. So simply ju jumping off the map or sitting AFK is what well, will disqualify well, you from getting it. I actually so appreciate that. I love that. So we get a 50% chance to drop the non-adept trials weapon weekly reward. 50% chance to get the trials engram drop and additional trials reputation. That's big for more engram. So the goal of these changes is to encourage players to team up with friends. With losses being less of a punishment, players can have more fun and be well rewarded while doing so. And yep. I guess for me, this is big because, you know, with all the changes and once they added the solo pool at one point, we have to admit, even though it benefited us E and we loved it, the Travises of the world who want the, the traditional experience yeah. It's gonna the pool's gonna be smaller for them in matchmaking, and it becomes different. And I think now this incentivizes people to say, okay, you know what? If we team up, we get more rewards for actually playing the mode. Yeah. The biggest thing is, is it content. enough? That's True. the difference. Is like, is it still a light population in a right. time where the game is low population? That's gonna be hard. This would be different mm -hmm. at final shape launch versus right now. Yeah. Uh, at times with low population, is it enough to go in? Additional fifty percent chance to drop the non adept trials weapon reward. 50% chance to get a Trials Ingram and additional Trials Reputation. Is that enough? Go through the headache of threes mm -hmm. and like work your way through what is still potentially a small population. Hopefully it goes up some. Or, and again, or is the benefit of easy flawlesses with duos to knock off mm -hmm. a bunch of solo people, is that easier to do? Some people mm -hmm. may do a mix of both. They may do, hey, let me knock out my flawless. We can try some threes, see how it goes and stuff. I can mm -hmm. see... But the biggest thing is, is the juice worth the squeeze? And that's only yeah. something those people will determine after right. some time testing it. That's, yeah. and again, 
it is a good incentive to have. They do realize mm -hmm. there's an issue with the threes. They're trying to incentivize yes. it, and that's a good thing. Is it enough? Only time will tell that one. That's yeah. all. I, my initial perception is I like it. I, I, I like it. I, well, I, that would incentivize. All right, let's at least get in there. Getting more chances for rewards in trials to me is always a good thing. And I've always said, I've always stand on my argument. I wish that's why, even though I wish Travis was here, is that this is a loot based game. Yep. And, and and there's people who are just never going to get some of these trials weapons because they're just too intimidated and getting curb stomped all the time. So at least it's a it's, it's a sign. It's a pointing in the right direction. And I, I to your point, though, we got to see how the, you know, the community responds to it. But it seems like for the most part, people I think I saw 5000 Watts say she really loved it. I saw I've been looking at the PVP. Cool guy seems to be positive. Like most of the PVP community seems really upbeat about these. But we got more stuff. Yeah. So we got okay. Uh, so there's a bunch about game modes. Yeah. I don't know if I want to go into all of that little yeah, detail. Yeah, that, yeah. I mean, if you are a PvP person, go read about your game modes. That's mm -hmm. totally fine. That's just a whole lot of nuance that we've already had a long podcast. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sandbox issues. Talked about the player health. Talked about the abilities. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is kind of a rehash of what we just talked yeah, about it's last week. Talked about. Yep. Yep. We did this already. Matchmaking details. Um. We will be updating our playlist tooltips to correctly display which Mac matching styles used for each mode. I mean, that's mm -hmm. not great. It doesn't matter, but that's fine. We have mm -hmm. several changes planned for ongoing experimentation with snaked draft lobby balancing aimed at improving how it handles fire teams. I know lobby balancing is a thing, so keep trying to make it right. I don't know if it does it, but maybe matchmaking. Our matchmaking systems do not individually force players to a 1.0 kill death ratio or a 50% win ratio. They do not intentionally allow players to dominate for a few games, then place them into games where they get destroyed. They do not sacrifice connection quality or skill for any other filter. Um, our three most common matchmaking systems, outlier protection, rank based and open skill all keep average connection quality generally within about the same bounds. In fact, outlier protection and ranked based have on average slightly better connection than open Ooh, skill. Interesting. Due to increased time, they remain in optimal connection bracket while searching for matches. So now that we've gone over what they don't do, how exactly yes. do different matchmaking systems work? So I do have that number right. It was negative thousand to a thousand. Negative which, thousand, yeah. Uh, to understand that we first talk about skill and skill details. So the skill range is negative thousand to a thousand, you know, wherever you are mm -hmm. on that bell curve and bar graph. Mm -hmm. Um, so. Games with deltas of less than 500 will generally feel competitive. So if you're negative 250 to 250, that's going to generally feel competitive as a group. Uh, with few or no players outclassed, there will be a difference in performance between highest and lowest players. Colloquially, we can figure out, uh, we can refer to this as the sweat zone. Sweat okay. zone, I like that. There. And again, if you're mm -hmm. 1500 to two, or 500 to 1000, there will be some really good ones. There'll be some decent ones, but in the overall average, depending on and again, if you mm -hmm. do that with the snake draft, that could help. With yeah. deltas greater than 500 and less than 1,000, there will be a noticeable skill variance. Usually enough to avoid games from feeling too, quote, sweaty. Some mm -hmm. players will be outclassed, but it's unlikely there will be people who match who are completely in over their heads. You don't want a negative 1,000 pairing with 1,000. This is no. obviously far from that. Mm -hmm. uh, at deltas larger than 1,000. So this is negative 501 to 501. You're going to put mm -hmm. two people together like that. Mm -hmm. There will likely be one or more players with who get few or no kills the entire game while contributing double digit deaths. We refer to this as the stomp zone. <laughs> stomp zone. I like that name. These experiences result in some of the largest negative sentiment spikes we see in our game and are nice. the heaviest drivers for player departures. Yes, that is true. So ranked based matchmaking. Mm. In most of our, in our most recent poll of rank based matching stats, here are numbers. 67% of rank-based matches start with converted rank deltas of less than 300, with all players within three minor ranks. 26% of rank-based matches start with converted rank deltas of more than 300, less than 500, with all players within five major ranks. 4% of ranked-based matches start with a converted rank of more than 500 and less than 600. 3% is more than 600. So if you look at 67 and 28%, you're talking about 90 Three percent of matches are within three to five ranks for competitive matchmaking. Competitive, yeah. That means they are generally matching you pretty close to your rank, depending on the population. They're going outside of outside of your rank. Only one out of every three and mm -hmm. then outside of one or two outside of that. 
seven percent of the time. Yeah. Right. So generally their matchmaking does a decent job. Now I don't know how connection plays into how that feels, but as for the matches that they have, 93% of them being within that 500, less than 500 apart. Mm -hmm. And when they say the less than 500 part is generally going to feel competitive. Yeah. Overall, it means they're matchmaking for comp numerically. I don't numerically. know. Numerically. I, numerically. I don't know yeah. The feel, but numerically. Yeah, sounds numerically right. sounds like it should be generally competitive, not too far out class. There will be some difference. Right. Shout um, out to them for the transparency on stuff that we never used to know before. Yeah. No, I appreciate yeah. this. Open skill matchmaking. This is CBMM, which everybody yep. would love that everything mm -hmm. always was all the time. Yeah, Here are the numbers from a most recent poll of open skill matchmaking stats 2% of open skill matches start with skill deltas of less than 500. 2% of your matches 2%. feel competitive. Wow. Two. Two. Wow. 52% of open skill matches start with deltas of more than 500, less to 1,000. This is when you're going to have their definition of 500 less than 1,000. These aren't, these avoid games from feeling too sweaty. Mm -hmm. So that's about half. The other about half, half. <laughs> is the skill delta of more than 1,000. Mm -hmm. This is where everybody's always going to go back and forth forever on the idea yep. of connections. They are important so you don't deal with lag versus skill stomping and crapping all over the little guy who's trying to start mm -hmm. out. If you just do open skill, you have the point where you're in the stomp zone the and you don't zone. you don't feel great about playing your matches. Mm -hmm. But on the other side, some people don't enjoy being sweaty. So somewhere yeah. the medium has to come in where there's connection mm -hmm. focus some skill focus and you widen it for. And that's always the thing. It's like in comp, it should be close. Like the way they describe that. Yeah. Having 93 percent of your matches be within 500 skill rating and like within three ranks. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that's kind of what you got to aim for. Or comp, but then if you do just like a global playlist like control, the brackets can be wider, some ups, some downs. Wider. You might get a little stompage, but the outlier protection needs to be there. Like if you're able to, if your population connection can manage it, keep it under a thousand. Because if you get above that, it feels like somebody's getting crapped on. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. The loose skill based matchmaking. Some samples of loose skill based mass best skill based matchmaking in season twenty two. 51% of matches start with skill deltas of less than 500, and 45% of matches start with skill deltas of more than 500, less than 1,000. So if it's loose skill-based, 96% of your matches are in those two zones that are not the stomp fest. Some a little sweatier, yeah. some a little less sweatier. Right. Uh, outlier protection. I've got those in there. Fire team based mm -hmm. matchmaking. God, this is the long foot. It's a long, yeah, it's a long one. Wow, jeez. Uh, lobby balancing. They did mention they're going to try to go to a bit of a snake draft. Mm -hmm. Something just to mix up the lobby balancing because, yeah, I mean, I've seen the ones where, like, True Vanguard is like, 47 kills, but he's on the losing team because he can't carry the whole team. Like, those are... Right. You got to kind of mix up the lobby balancing. You got accessibility, mm -hmm. console UI updates. Okay, prophecy weapon update. I got to see this. Allah. They are removing Last Breath Auto, Long Lock Sniper, Swift Verdict Sidearm. That's right. fine. I don't really care about any of those. I think they're, like, yeah, all okay. kinetic. Yeah, and came out of uh, a new origin trait called crossing over Ooh. makes sense for prophecy with the light and dark. Mm -hmm. These weapons have increased range and handling for the top of the magazine, while rounds from the bottom half of the magazine deal increased damage. So it's like, what is the bottom half of the mag bonus damage clip that exists already? Oh, was it? Um, uh, I know. Like, what is it? A uh, reserve something? Is it yeah, something reserves. Chat will know the faster than we do. Chat know faster than we do. Yeah. High impact reserves. That's, that's what it is. High impact reserves. Yeah, I knew it was something reserves. Yeah. So you got high impact reserves on the bottom half, still there as an origin mm -hmm. trait. Now, I wonder if high impact reserves can drop on these weapons. Yeah, yeah, that'd be... Because that'd be, that'd be spicy. Yeah. That'd be spicy. I would probably say that they won't be in the perk pool for these weapons. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's no just break PvP with the new weapons. Yeah. Uh, but range and handling at the top. Range and handling at the top. So there's incentive to play through both sides of the magazine, especially you get benefits for PvP for range and handling. Mm -hmm. And then if you do get low in the magazine, you might get a chance to finish, like kind of yeah. clean up the kill. Yep. So they are adding the prosecutor auto rifle, precision mm -hmm. arc, the adjudicator submachine gun, primary, uh well, yeah, of course, primary, precision kinetic. And then precision Relentless frame. Pulse. What? Precision Frame Autos. Those are, what, 450s? What are those? Yeah, I think that's right. Okay. Okay, so it's an arc, arc 450. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. You got a Kinetic. 
precision submachine gun. Is that 600s? Are they precision? You go and check. <laughs> and then cool. high impact pulses. I know those are like your 340s. Mm -hmm. uh, damage changed from kinetic to strand for relentless. Mm -hmm. They also updated the judgment hand cannon to be adaptive frame from kinetic to stasis. Darkest before rapid fire damage changed from arc to solar. Sudden death shotgun. Updated in counter drops. Phalanx Echo, the Cube, the Cal Echo, Judgment Hand Cannon. Oh, those are the drops of where you get them. Got it. So, yeah, Prophecy is going to be the final wish. So I will probably actually have to put a Prophecy Guide together here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, just because there will be incentive to run it. There'll be incentive to go for the new loot. And this thing is... Isn't this coming soon? Yeah, 7.3.5. So this is March. March. Which, yeah, that will be... Because this is week four... Five will be next mm -hmm. week with Final Fantasy. Six will be that. So yeah, that is, yeah, Prophecy, New Gear, all coming together. So yeah, I got to work mm -hmm. on my guide before that. Yeah, a lot of damage type changes. Yep. Uh, you got some contest winners, player support, art, movie, all that fun. Mm -hmm. That is a lot of Destiny. Yeah, it was a lot of Destiny. We haven't talked this about But I will say, sure. for a PvP community that has been neglected for way, way, way too long, that this is the most that we have probably seen about PvP in depth, some transparency, some good changes, some happy people on Twitter. You don't see yeah. that very often for Twitter. Very rare. Yeah, the Twitter Twitter sphere is not wanting to uh, strangle the PvP team. They're actually cooking. <laughs> That's yeah. that is admirable to be able to do it in not that long of a time. Um, that's legit. So, yeah. and it's a free to play dungeon. That's why it's yes. there too. Yep. Yes. So, yeah, overall, yeah. EVP is getting a lot of work, and we got plenty of time before we get the final shape and whatever else is coming with that. Right now, if you're making the PvP people happy, they will kind of stick around and experiment a little more with your game in the interim. Yeah. If you want to try Destiny, and for some reason, I don't know how you found this podcast and don't play Destiny, mm -hmm. but if for some reason you know either of us, you hear about us, the Humble Bundle is for six more days. I had to look it up. Six more days, or five days and 23 hours, as we're recording this. So by the time you get there, probably five days. Um, $40 for everything. Yeah, I mean, honestly, for comp, for artifice armor, might be a reason Ooh. to jump in, see where you can land. Mm -hmm. yeah, listen, March, was it March 5th? Was What's that date? Yep, March 5th. That, that, that's March 22nd, I'm not going to be around for too much Destiny, but... right. But Marsh, this is a huge update. This is a huge update. Yeah, huge these, update are, these are big. That's a lot. Massive. Happening. Massive for the PvP community. Massive for trials. Massive for the incentivization of, of our comp. A lot of these weapon changes I felt made sense. Um, and then obviously we're going back to less abilities and, and more focused on primary gunplay, which again, I don't have too much of a problem with. I think it's all for the better. And I, I do think that um, we got to see how it settles out in the meta and stuff like that. But uh, I do think these are really strong changes. I was really excited when I was reading it, this uh, twid or whatever, you know, because I was like, all right, this is a step in the right direction fundamentally. And let's get back also to rewarding and incentivizing PvP the same way you incentivize PvE, Nightfalls, Grandmasters yeah. in that respect. The PvE community deserves that level of respect based on their investment. Yeah. It's, it's a lot to digest, and I think the PvP community will have a lot of testing to do, but I think that gives them something to look forward to, and they haven't had that yeah. in a long time, and this is... Long time. And maps. This is, Yeah, and three maps. maps. Wow. Three maps at the same time, before mm -hmm. Final Shape. Mm -hmm. Shabby. That's too shabby, guys. I like it. Keep pushing. I like it. Mm -mm -mm. Uh well, Maybe. thank you guys for sticking through one of our longer ones in a while, I gotta tell you, because I, I know I started with a bit of a story. Um, yeah. We got a lot of gifted memberships. Thank you, Outsanity. Thank you, mm -hmm. Three Geeks. You guys were very generous in here, sharing a lot of love. Um, oh. Thank you guys for uh, <laughs> being here for the yeah, rough moments. Oh, they come and go. You know, you get the waves of sadness and tears, then you get to smile about the happy times, and yep, all of that, but also, thank you guys for being here for everything that we talk about from hour and a half of Destiny and a whole bunch of other stuff. Is Destiny 2 cooked, chat? Yes. yes uh, I will yes. say the PvP strike team cooked. They really did. Yeah, they did their thing. They did their thing. And I just love the reaction for the PvP, you know, community. 
just to see them kind of the juices flowing. Like, okay, to see them excited is big because we know it's been almost two years of, of just, you know what I'm saying, trash and everything. Oh, shout out to Three Geeks. <laughs> three Geeks, hashtag dog noises fixes everything. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yep. Salute. Yeah, she was our, yeah, Huskies, by the way, not known to be guard dogs. Ryo barked at everything outside. Oh, yeah, yeah. She was, yeah, she, she, was she was on it. So yes. he was the OG guard dog. Oh, so. yeah. Oh, yeah. She made sure, she was like, look, make sure you, you ain't messing with E or something. <laughs> yeah. You get near this door, you're going to hear some stuff. You're going to hear about us. I'm going to train the other two to do it, too, because now they all do it. Oh, they all do it now. Midnight, of course, is now the loudest. And also, high, he just, like, screams at stuff. He's the hilarious. He's a whole... You'll meet it. He's a whole character. I haven't met Midnight. No, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah meet him. Uh, at some point, you'll have to come down and experience a real steak dinner without steak sauce. And then we'll without the A1. Get you there. Man, I Where my out. wife and I went for... um. We went for Valentine's. We do a little. We never celebrate on the day anymore. It's never worth going to a restaurant on that day. Just oh, pick a little okay. around it. Yeah. Um. Twelve ounce fillet mm. just melts, dude. Mm. You can tell it's like literally just like salt and pepper, clean, okay. good mm. crust, medium mm. rare, maybe mm. medium rare plus depending on where it's at, mm -hmm. and just man, that fillet it just melts. This melts. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, we got, we have, I'm going to have to learn about this thing without, you know, this properly prepared steak thing. I mean, you're talking dry that. aged for three or four weeks, however long they do it for. Uh, then you get a good crust on it. Are you a ribeye, a filet, strip? What's your choice? Oh, oh. Well, I mean, like you got to pick one. I mean, probably filet and strip probably would be my two. Ribeye, I could do is that I don't, I'm not biased towards steak. Like, I'm not like so. No, but I mean, every, some people are like, I like the filet a little more because it's more tender and I don't have to mess mm. with the fat. But ribeye, right. there is some fat you kind of got to work the around, fat, but yeah. the flavor from the fat does actually add. So but everybody's. I, I would say I'm biased against ribeye. I don't like dealing with the fat as much. It's fair. If I had. There is yeah. one part of the ribeye and I know it's the out because you have the bone that they're usually cut off and you got the ribeye over here and then there's like kind of a little layer of fat and then it's the outer section of a ribeye. Mm. Ooh. that that's the part of a ribeye that melts and when that little outside part of a ribeye is cooked the way that like that's the part that's like that'll compete with a filet because it falls apart but it's also got like the marbling and flavor mm -hmm. yeah no doubt yep so mm -hmm. uh and then yeah lobster mac and cheese and lobster Ooh. bisque yes let's go or no crab mac and cheese they do lobster is a different place but yeah crab mac and cheese well, lobster trying, bisque and dude the loaf of bread so crumbly, but just oh. in like, nah, yeah. Yeah, we got to go to this Glass spot. of wine. I had a cocktail that was bizarre, too. Normally, I do like, a, I, they actually make a really good lemon drop. It's kind of where I started getting them. Mm -hmm. um, you can give me a hard time. I like lemon drops, so, so be it. But <laughs> I do. I've always like, first drink I had when I met why my wife was a pomegranate margarita. So she knew what she was Let's getting go. into. She knew. She knew what time it was. So this one was called Pear A Dice Found, and it's spelled P-E-A-R. So it was Wheatley Vodka, Spiced mm. Pear, so you had kind of like cinnamon pear kind of flavor, nice. Blackberry, Lemon Juice, Rosemary Petals, and Orange Bitters. And it was like this layered thing where it was like a little sweet with the blackberry and lemon up front. You had like kind of the cinnamon pear in the back. Um, nice. Pull it away with the Gifted Sub as well. Uh, uh, whiskey Sour. Okay, so that is the thing I will tell you right now. Everybody will tell me, uh -oh. be like, I don't like whiskey because the way, like oh, for me, whiskey. it's the burn. Like, the whiskey okay. for me, when it follows a burn, and vodka usually can be masked. Like, if you make a lemon drop yes. well, yes, you yeah, you're going to taste a little alcohol, but most of the time, you're not going to. And then margaritas, yeah, those are my other. Oh, yeah, those, those are the king. Those yeah. are the king. We, we've shared the giant margarita. We've shared many, many of margaritas. Many of margarita. So. We have competition now with, with the callous one. <laughs> and, oh, uh, I, think, I think I'll drink. I drank it faster than you. That wasn't. I think yeah, I won I that think one. You cheated this year. I think this year you did cheat on me, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take the L graciously. We can go out here <laughs> to a Mexican restaurant. I know we'll happily drink margaritas with you, and you're gonna lose oh, let's that do battle. It. Oh, let's do it! All right, come on down. That, Steak dinner Travis. on one night, yeah, and the margaritas oh, yeah, on it, another. Oh, yeah, wait, we'll set it up because I think I actually got to go to Texas for something soon. You, yeah, you got to get down here. I also yeah, got to eventually get, get up here. your way, but that's all. Yeah, like when that's coming. Like y'all got to get to NY. Come on now, yeah, got to get out of here. All right, a pickleback yeah. shot. Never in my life am I going to do a pickleback shot. By the way, Dan yeah. Finity sitting here raiding with seventy people. You are coming in at the end of the show, so thank Dan you for sharing Finity. the community. Salute. I know Dan Finity. We were talking about. I told you, Raya mm -hmm. passed. Been sad for a couple of days. Definitely going in and out of crying. We will get that talk that we wanted to because Dan Finity was talking about kind of like covering variety and branching away from Destiny. I was like, 
Been doing a lot of that. We can definitely have a lot to talk about. So that might be a two hour show as well at some point. Slow, slow. I do not like pickles. I hate the smell. Oh, I think God. the taste is worse. I probably would have ketchup before I would have a pickle. Jesus, we got to work on you. Pickles are so good. Pickles are not good. Jesus. Um, I will say, Dan Finney, the distractions do help. But yeah, first couple of days. I would, it was like Tuesday we were talking, so it was rough. Um, pickles are the key to happiness. Not mine. Yes. Pickles are the key to my sadness. <laughs> uh, geeks. That's funny. Yeah, pickle. No, okay, I will tell you. I've never liked the smell of pickles. I can smell them across the table. They, I can smell pickles. Pick them up that bad. When I worked at a movie theater, you know, they sold like the big, the full dill pickle that some people would yeah, eat. Yeah, the full dill. Yeah. So I worked at the, cash, the concession like area. So I had to go in the back in the big bucket of pickles, pick them up with the tongs, put them in. And I was like, yep. I could get through that, but I still didn't like it. Ooh. One time, pickle slipped, landed in the pickle juice, covered me in pickle juice. I was this yes. close to throwing up. I was so close <laughs> to throwing up. It was so close. Now, Dan Finity, I will tell you another thing. Apparently, this podcast will never end. Sorry. Cog. Mm, yeah, well, well, now we good. When I worked at different job, but more of a corporate environment, kind of an office structure, mm -hmm. there was a point in the break room. It was kind of a central area. Somebody from like their garden bought a whole bunch of brought a whole bunch of fresh dill. Okay. I literally got a headache from it. I kid you not. This got to be mental. No, nope. like only. No, I would walk into the lobby and I was like, oh, and I was like, and then I would go. I would just leave the lobby and go to my office. Not there. <laughs> maybe I have a dill <laughs> issue. A dill I, issue. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Dilly dilly issue. Mm -hmm. Now everybody wants to go have some pickles. Just go to like Twisted Root. Good. See, my, yeah, my wife will go to Twisted Root or to the burgers. She'll go up to a little pickle bar and come back with her little bucket of pickles. And I'm sitting nice. there going, I love her. Yes. Yes, serenade that. Let's go. Twisted root has good fries, but I don't. I don't need pickles in my life. I'm good. <laughs> kosher cool. pickles are the way. No dill yes. and aren't boiled. It's not the kosher. Yeah, yeah. Fried pickles. I've work. seen. Dog is used to ILP podcasts. So. Oh yeah, this light. I was like two. No, I know, light. but I'm just saying, like, no, no. For us, some, for as audience. later in the night as you yeah. are. Now, granted, you stay up late now. You, True, you, you, but I do gotta eat. Uh, yeah, you usually gotta eat. So. All right. Well, long episode. Hopefully you all enjoyed this one. Um, thank you all for being here through what I'm going through and just supporting. You guys are great. A um, lot of really good games to play. Got some yes. PVP excitement coming up. Destiny's going to Destiny's gonna keep cooking. And I will say, if you think mm -hmm. there's not going to be anything after Final Shape, I don't believe it. <laughs> yeah. Stuff, so they're still working on stuff. It will be. Marathon's not a guarantee either. Pacific mm -hmm. Drive is very fun. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'm like 14 hours in and it's a loop that works for me. Not for everybody, but it's working so far. So I'm like 14 mm -hmm. hours in. I'm in the mid zone. Yes. A little chaotic. Uh, you got any crazy news coming up? Like another guest podcast mm -hmm. everywhere? You're just going to have yourself <laughs> all over the place? Yeah, we got it. We got a guest. We got, uh, I believe, Genki from Japan. Really cool um, content creator based out in Tokyo. So we'll have him out there. Nice. We try to get the uh, Final Fantasy, you know, 7 re Rebirth remake. Mm -hmm you know, train going. So um we'll be talking to him this, this Sunday in the realm. Uh Defining Duke is out. Um check that out. Me and Maddie. And then um I was kind of promoting one of our older interviews that me and Maddie did with uh Josh Shoya from Pentiment. Now that Pentiment is uh, on multi platform. We didn't even get into all that today, all that craziness of, of, of the um the games coming on PlayStation and Switch and stuff like that. But great interview if you can check that out. I retweeted it early on my timeline. Go check that out. But yeah, that that's pretty much it, man. Just getting ready. I think we got another month before um PAX and uh Sacred Three Hundred, but we do a live show in New York City. But uh, so I'm doing a lot of prep for that stuff. But other than that, game wise I'm gonna start, but I gotta get back on Destiny to do the. I gotta do my wishes this week, and I just um. Yeah, they they nerfed though, so yeah, you're probably better to have waited. Uh, your cool, quick. but uh, this week is blind well, so I gotta do blind well. Yeah, Did they nerf that. <laughs> uh, it's probably less than it was. I don't know okay. if we knew what the data mining was. I'd have to look, but I think okay. stuff is less than it was. Like even when it said oh. I needed 500 lost sector kills or whatever, it was like two lost sectors. It was like 160. So. Things just count weird, so I wouldn't worry too much. Cool. No, it's been three, hero shit. three heroic ones. Make sure it's gun kills, though, not ability. Oh, take, gun kills. Take a machine gun. Probably a yeah. good idea. It sucks that the your fire team they don't get we don't get the credit. Yeah. Well, they can't they can't win all of them, but yeah. It is what it is. But yeah, that's pretty much it. 
For me, yeah, uh, working on, so I will be probably streaming a little bit because now some of these embargoes are up. So I do want to play more Nightingale, probably finish that one. Uh, I may get to play a little bit of something for early March and then later in March, obviously a couple big things are coming, but yeah, for now, a little bit of streaming and again, still trying to cover. So if you guys want to support the variety content on the channel, it helps a ton. Um, but yeah, episode 285, Travis is enjoying his world of NDA stuff. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, but when he gets back, we'll catch up with him next week and thank you to everybody for everything. You guys are awesome. And we're, we keep coming back. We're 15 away from 300, which is bonkers, but we're getting there. Yeah, man. Uh, Cog, thanks for everything, bud. You're welcome, bud. Thank you. And uh, we, like I said, we love you, E. We know how tough this was and as a community. I'm glad everybody came out and showed you love. And Rye is definitely missed, will not be forgotten. Never. And um, yeah, we know, we know how important this week was. All right, everybody. You guys are awesome. Have a great one. And for episode number 285, it has been the last, last word. word.